today, 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 today we play a new game called Citizen Sleeper. Wow! I know zero about this game. It sounds pretty peaceful though. I'll just chill out here. Hi, bestie. Hey, Gino! What's up? What's happening? How's it going? How you doing tonight? Split audio for you? What do you mean? What the heck is split audio? Google it. Google it. Google it. Google it. Don't use pure desktop. You talk about like just capturing a game application. You just use a uh, what's it called? This thing. It might still even be called beta. It's a uh, audio application audio capture. So you can uh, you can do audio application audio capture and just pick it to Discord. That's just how I have it set up, and you only hear Discord or whatever. That's the that's the one you're looking for. If you want to capture just one application and not the whole uh, PC. And anyway, let's let's go sleep. Really, just going between game and the game pa and the passes. Yeah, true. I fo I focus more on indie games though. Because, you know, they're shorter for one. You know, I don't want to do a bunch of super long, big AAA whatever. And they would probably otherwise be overlooked by me because they'd be like, is this worth $30? I don't know. It was a Game Pass game. You're like, oh, let's just try it out. Let's go. Let's press A to start. Let's press A to start. Oh, we're sinking data. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, a Citizen Sleeper 2 has been announced. That's that's good to know, but... Right now, we're gonna, we're gonna press new game, I guess. There's no options thing? Hmm. It's just language. English. Doo -doo -doo. I guess I don't need any other option options other than language. <laughs> Hey Mexican boy, what's up? What's happening? How's it going? How you doing tonight? We're just starting a new game today. For our short game day. This one's supposed to take about 10-ish hours. I'll take 20. It's required. It's thundering for you. Oh! What are you doing on your PC? Go outside and enjoy the thunderstorm right now. Let's press new game. Empty. Uh, what the heck is all this? What the heck is all this operator? Oh, is this a character selection thing? Oh, choose character class. Oh. I mean, uh, I, I totally know which one's the best one to pick. Operator works with drones and high precision remote machines to perform complex tasks from a distance. Sleepers assigned to operator work are usually cerebral and precise people. <gasps> Perk transfer intercept. Gain to chance to gain cryo and interface actions. And then there's like plus one, minus one. Hmm. Where's that thing? Oh yeah, see so like the numbers change. Extractors work on resource extraction, often in hard vacuum environments. Sleepers assigned to extractor work are often confident, self-sufficient, and have a high level of endurance. Work <gasps> photosynthetic skin. Sunbathed dice action allows energy recovery at home. I have no idea what any of these classes mean. Oh, we got machinist over here. Machinist repairs and modifies automated systems used in industrial resource extraction. Sleepers assigned to machinist work are usually diligent, careful, and structured people. Work efficient... Extractor. Chance to gain random scrap item on engineer actions. Mm, so there's three classes. Um, so I don't have the slightest clue what the game's about. It doesn't really matter what I pick on my first playthrough. Because I don't know what I'm doing anyway, right? That's kind of the point of a first playthrough. You just go with whatever. So we'll probably just go with the default one it picks here. What's my life like outside of stream? Leap. <laughs> 
work, eat food, play games, sleep, <sighs> repeat. It's very um ordinary. There's no superheroes. No, no, no saving the world. I'm afraid. It's like pretty much everybody else. But uh, done with pro style, right? <laughs> totally. Hey there, Dolby. What's up? What's happening? How's it going? A little Twitch TV viewer, Dolby, I should say. Hope you're doing well tonight. You're just in time for a new game. When do I breathe? I do that automatically. Except right now. Now I'm thinking about it. I'm breathing manually now. I take Sunday off, though. I don't stream Sunday. I totally just chill out Sunday. I work on my yoga. No, I don't. Let's try this. Oh, that's louder than I thought it'd be. Maybe I had the game menu open. Too high because of the quiet music. Who knows? We'll adjust accordingly. Sitting and thinking and stuff. <gasps> what kind of stuff? Look at that cool loading icon. Wow. Isn't that cool? Probably take five hours to load on Xbox One S. Or if does yoga confirm? Not really. I have immense respect for anyone who does yoga. I've tried yoga before. It's, oh my god, it's exhausting. <laughs> Not bleak to you, pro. Aww, thank you, thank you. You're waiting, huh? Well, unknown. Where are you? First thing you become aware of on waking is the disconnect. The delay between thinking and feeling. Between wanting to act and acting. Minor, almost imperceptible, but always present. Wait, what? What? This is kind of loud. Let's turn it down a bit. Super cool. That's right, that's right. What do all those logos mean? Items, data? Wait. It's at its worst when waking, when yourself has spent many dark hours recalling what it felt like to be real be a person. To be a, in a body that was indisputably yours. Oh, is this like robots or something? Is this robot? Am I a robot? Think of that body. Forget that body. Well, I get choices. <clears throat> Did I think about my human existence? Tell me a bunch of text. This might be a Neon Kitty game. Might be a neon kitty game! Wah! Oh, I told it. Yeah. Well, I hope you do a very efficient job of the waiting and stuff and things. Well, let's think about our human existence. Well. Leap into a cold take on a hot day. A cold take. Lake. Lake. Who's jumping in lakes? Come on now. The sting of blood welling from a fresh wound. The friction of a fingertip. All of a sudden, the memories are closer than you thought. Blurring as you approach. Until you can't tell one from the other. <gasps> Where'd they go? Where did they go? The cold slips in. Behind and around you. And the sensations fade out of reach. Perhaps you should be thankful for the dulled nature of this new body, given your current circumstances. The walls of the container feel immediately present, cold, hard at your back and face, cramping your limbs. That doesn't sound very comfortable. Maybe you took them? I can't believe you took my ears. You resist the desire to stretch, knowing that the claustrophobia comes next and retreat a little from your central nervous system. It isn't painful. Not like you used to know pain, at least. In emergency mode, pain is a message delivered with efficiency and ease. A reminder that harm is immediate, or not immediate, imminent. There's no insistent throb, no trembling nerves. Just a warning delivered with the banal quality of a digital notification. Right now, there are thousands of them. Oh... Wait, remember the plan or remember the others? 
Hmm. We'll go with others? You remember there were ten of you. Ten that could no longer stand the indentured work, the routines, the slow decay. Ten whose belief in their promised future was slowly dismantled day by day until they realized they had sold away everything that could and would ever matter. And that would escape, or at least die trying. Ooh, are we an escapee from something? Hey, Spunky Taro, what's up? What's happening? How's it going? You just started playing this a few days ago. You're hooked. Oh, hopefully you enjoy as much as I have. Oh, I probably will. It, it's, I've heard it's a cool game. I don't know much about it, but we'll, we'll, we'll play it. We'll see what's going on here. What we got here? Some were lost in the shaft. Others never found the meeting point. Only a few made it to the containers. But the freighter, as far as you know, left. That feels like, like enough. Enough to know that you might no longer be on that grim and heartless rock. Even if, in the airless hold of a freighter, you might freeze solid long before you reach any destination. <gasps> so we're like, trying to escape a planet or something? We're like, in a shipping container? And may maybe... Mm, uh, sleeping seems like a bad idea. You're not supposed to sleep if you're really cold, right? You're supposed to stay awake. Let's wait for the code. That's all there is now. It has been a long time since you left. Surely weeks, maybe months. You are dully aware of damage to your legs, your right arm. You have been reserving energy as much as possible, but your body is still needed to shut down many of its systems to protect you. You have spent much of that time asleep, knowing that anything else would be impossible to endure. Well, that's right, you're like a robot or something, right? So, you would, you would be able to survive much longer than a human in a shipping container. You feel the weight of that impossibility begin to gather. It is time to sleep again, to nudge this false body into inducing delta waves in your emulated mind, and once again recoil into a dream of when you were once a person. <gasps> it's time to nap. <sighs> a nap. Time passes. The cold creeps further in. You feel something. Oh, warmth. Not true warmth, but the indication of its of its presence. Your joints release from their rigor. Down too everywhere, screeching and shimmering so loud that your body ducks your hearing to protect its sensors. Huh. Then light. Uh, that's all those bars at the top and bottom. Then light, white as the cold, softer and softer, until a haze of dirty yellow, a figure appears. Oh, to in a, a haze. Uh, okay. You are out. We survived! Dragos Pragmatic Salvager. What? What? Ooh, is this a spaceship? Kind of looks like a satellite or something. Wow! What the heck is all this? Well, press A button. The wriggles. Oh, so it's like a person. Very detailed story. Oh, this is gonna be one of those story games. Than visual novel types. At least so far. At least so far. Let's see. It has been a few hours since Dregos pulled you from the container. You sit huddled in a corner of his scrapyard, swaddled in the reflective folds of a Mylar blanket. You are slowly coming back to consciousness, back to life, and you stare at the ornately curving element of an imp improvised heater. Well, they're not pure robots then if they need uh, heat and food and stuff. They're more like, what, what do you call those? Cyborgs? Are you expected? I was expecting nothing, though. But I knew zero about this game. I told you about the game before. I don't remember that. You know my memory is, is like um, a five seconds. You mentioned the get after Opus. Yeah, you said if I liked Opus, I'd like this game. Well, let's go. Let's go. Yeah, my memory's about 30 seconds, right? Be like, uh, I forgot everything. Holy. 
Definitely. You are surrounded by angular, incoherent lumps of ships, some corroded beyond recognition. Others still carrying glassy wounds along their edges where a plasma arc sliced them apart. <gasps> As you trace their shapes with fogged eyes, you hear a voice. Uncool. Come on, Belby. You mentioned the game five years ago. I don't remember. Oh, sleeper. You all thawed yet? Are you then Twitch TV streamer? I'm doing pretty well. It was a very uh, a typical day. No giant explosions, no asteroids crashing into Earth. We're, we're okay. We're ready to, uh, to play more games, right? Second game comes out soon. You're so hype. Oh, hype, hype, hype. Let's see. Should we say that's we're almost... Should we talk or should we stay silent? Hmm. I have no problem with talking to people. Come on, though. Almost. Never seen one of you come in like this. New frames must have been must have better pres wait, perseverance than Sub Zero Vac. Seen more than a few of you frozen solid to hull plates or inside outer locks in my time. They weren't so lucky. Dragos comes into focus, shrouded in makeshift tech. His headset with it with its glinting eyes, the mark of a drone operator. Woo! On his shoulder, one of his symbiotically linked drones perches, its irising eye locking you with an unflinching stare. Last living sleeper that came through this yard was a while ago. They didn't last long. He struggled to read his expression beneath the tech, but he seems lost in memory for a moment. Or perhaps he is just figuring out what to do with you. Plan to survive? What happened to all that? Uh, can you just be the whole game staying quiet? I'm just gonna stay quiet the whole game. Hmm. What happened to them? He ignores your question. I won't ask what led you to do it. To sell yourself to a corporation. And I suppose you know you can't go back. Your old body. That's theirs now. You are just... Software. A rogue emulation illegally possessing corporate property. Ugh. You nod along. You remember biometrically signing the forms. The cold floor on your feet as you padded to the sleeper cells. The promise of a life off-world. But as you do, you get the now familiar sensation that these aren't your memories. These are things you know, but not things you feel. You are no longer that person. You are an offshoot. A copy. Well, that means that if you're a copy, there's still the original you back on that other planet. The original possibly human you. And we're just doing the the copy store. Wait, couldn't there be like 20 bajillion copies like that? There could be like 20 other yous out there. Oh. Let's go and get complicated, isn't it? What you won't know is that what's ahead. At least the last one didn't. There's no easy way to put it. That body of yours is falling apart. It's the same for any sleeper who makes it out. S and Arp wants to protect their property, but if they can't keep hold of you, well then no one can. Oh, they go kill me. No, wait, wait, I'm a robot. Deactivate me. You remember that too, or at least rumors of it from the other sleepers. Planned obsolescence. And a built-in dependence on the regularly administered supplements that were part of your routine. Oh, that, that, that's me. Stop taking them and your body begins to shut down. Separate from your emulated mind. How long has it been? How long do you have? But for now, sleeper, you are one of the lucky ones. Gregos glances up and away, towards the glassy dome of the yard. The eye is the best place you could be right now. What the heck is the eye? The eye? Funny Perfilius, that's a scary thought. Yeah, I'm gonna have my mind scanned and cloned or something, and I'm gonna be like, there's gonna be 20 Perfilius. We'll totally all stream at the same time, too, and you'll come in, and we'll each be playing a different game. A sleeper class of I? Uh, I picked the default one. What was that, operator or something? 
This is my first playthrough, you know? No spoilers, by the way. First playthrough. We're gonna have a good time just doing whatever. Figured it all out, right? Let's see what the eye is. The station. You'll see soon enough. Gregus impatiently shifts his weight. Look, I've got things to be getting on with. He trails off. There's an old freight container I've been using as storage out in the stacks. We haven't been pulling in much valuable scrap these days, so you are welcome to it. He's given me a house. Something wells up inside of you. Emotion. Fatigue. You shakily get to your feet. Nod. Nod. Alright, you head on up there. You look like you need some rest. And with that, Drago stalks back into the wrecks, his drones already converging on a rusting hulk. Plasma flashes silhouetting his spindly figure as he returns to work. Interesting. What? Tutorial introduction? Welcome to Erlin's Eye. Life on the Eye runs in cycles, during which you can talk to characters, explore areas of the station, and perform actions. At the end of each cycle, you need to head to your current home to rest. Resting will move time forward on the station. Head to the empty container location to rest and end the cycle now. Select locations with the D-pad and A. Okay. But what if I don't want to go home? What if I want to explore? Empty container your home for now. I mean... It sounds like a pretty nice home. Actually, if you're, if you're out here, you we wouldn't have rain. You wouldn't have snow, although I guess you'd still have cold because you're in outer space. You would probably have sun depending on how close to the sun you are. Space house doesn't sound too bad. It's just floating along. Look at that. Wow. Wait. Ooh, ooh. There, I tried to move the camera. Ooh, ah. ooh. I'm just watching this debris here. I guess all I can do is sleep for now. Darn it. What happens when I press X? Ryo, cryptocurrency stored in airwalled sticks of memory known as chits. What? Okay. There's no data yet. He's going back every time I go to select it. RB. Ugh. Wow! Let's go home. All cycles need to end. Rest and prepare for the next one. What? There they say everything needs to end at some point. Come on. Then. That's one you're playing now. Awesome. Container, four steel walls. It's got four steel walls. It's got a roof. It's, it's 10 out of 10. You wake up curled in the corner of the container and begin slowly assembling the world around you. After all this time, you still find this body, the one you wake in now, strange and disjointed. Its message is readable, but somehow wrong. You sit up pulling the Mylar blanket close against the cold. Here you are, on this ruined station, millions of miles from anyone you know. Are you still in the system? Did any of the others make it out? It's impossible to know. After all this, what matters? Oh. What, what matters? Escape, getting answers, building a life. Hmm. Good night, bestie. Good night, Gino. You take care of yourself. You get your ZZZs. Get your sleep. Have a good sleep. Eight hours minimum. Totally required. If you can't get that, you gotta turn your clock back so a few hours to get it, okay? Forgot what you're gonna say now, Dolby? Oh. Hmm. I, I can come up with something. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? 
Ya, what's up? What's up? I told, uh, okay, see, I told, you came up with something to say. That's totally what you're gonna say, right? You're gonna be like, what's up? No, you weren't. Mm. I mean, you've already escaped. Uh, how about building a life? Maybe you did get lucky, finding yourself here. Maybe here, on the edge of everything, there's a life for you to build. But before you can build anything, you'll need to learn to survive. I'll need to learn to survive. Oh, dang it. Oh, double pressed it. Maybe if you can do that, you can make a life for yourself. Dragos has new a few well, Dragos has left a few comforts in the container. Mylar blanket, the bedroll you slept on, a canister of water, a makeshift electric stove, and some faded sachets of some desiccated powder. You thumb the power stud of the stove and begin to boil the water. The contents of the sachet smell like damp wood and you sprinkle them into the liquid. As the pungent smell washes over you, images from your restless sleep come back to you. A ring, like the station, but skeletal and ghostly. A web of threads pulling at your skin. A constellation of bright polygonal shapes, like angular suns, burning into your mind. Ugh, I keep double pressing A. I did that a lot. Honestly, I wonder if it's the controller. No, it's not me double pressing A, okay? It's totally the controller's doing. There's something unpleasantly visceral about these images. And it is long after you've finished drinking before they begin to fade. You tidy away the stove as best you can and try to gather enough energy to greet the day. There's something unpleasantly visceral about these images. And it is long after you... Wait, what? Wait, what? Is that double? Hey, that's double? Huh? What? Okay. Yeah, that's double. Tutorial condition, action dice, and energy? One condition! Your condition represents the current state of your artificial body. It depletes by one segment each cycle, but it can also be damaged by violence, injury, or lack of food. If your condition bar empties, you will suffer a breakdown. You'll have to figure out how to recover your condition now that you no longer have access to corporate pharmaceuticals that were keeping you alive. Ew, action dice. At the start of each cycle, you roll your action dice. These dice can be used to perform actions on the station. Hmm, so we're Dungeons and Dragon in this? The number of dice rolled is based on your current condition. The worse your condition, the fewer dice you have. Uh-oh. Once you have used your dice, you cannot take any further actions and must rest to recover them, ending the current cycle. Uh. Oh. Okay. I mean, uh, this is your spoon allotment for the day. Free energy! You also need to eat to survive. This is represented by your energy bar. You can refill your energy bar by eating, but first you'll have to find somewhere to get food. Your energy depletes by two segments each cycle. If it becomes empty, you will be starving. Uh. When starving, energy loss becomes condition loss, and your condition will also deplete at a at a double rate per cycle. Yikes. Um, well, eating food is pretty important, I guess. Even if you're a machine. At least a cyborg or something. I think I press B, right? Dragos is standing in the corridor when you close up the container. He's still wearing his headset, and in the harsh light of the corridor, you realize it is implanted. A drone sits on his shoulder, its cache of sensor eyes rapidly irising. How are you feeling? I mean, uh, okay, I'm okay. I, uh, why would I say not good? That, that seems kind of impolite. Uh, uh, you're okay. The drone chirps. Good to hear. You notice that beneath the operator's rig, his skin is marked by burns and blotches. I know the container isn't much, but it'll keep you safe. He pauses. 
Though, I'm not going to chit-chat too long. You well enough to work? <gasps> work? Look, I'll be honest with you, sleeper. I didn't pull you out of that container out of the goodness of my heart. He looks away. God damn it. At the yard, it's simple stuff. We hack these old halls down, sell them off to the shipyards or the bright market dealers for cryo. And occasionally we pull out some tech, something with a bit more value. But most of what comes in is scrap. It's hard to find good hands here, but I figure as a sleeper, you'll be used to the manual labor. And obviously, I'll slip you a few chits of commission based on what you turn up. Chits? What, the, what are those? These. He pulls out a handful of small metal bars. Airworld cryo. Isolated from the market. It's what we use for trade out here. He stuffs them back in a pocket. He shuffles his feet nervously. Look, I, us I wouldn't usually be do this. In my opinion, you'd be best suited moving on as quick as you can. And the sleepers, well, he trails off. They die. But things being the way that they are for me at the yard... He pauses. I need the help. Why do you need the help? I keep asking all these questions. I was like, you gotta tell me what's going on around here. Things are a little tight, that's all. I owe a little cry out to a client here or there. Ooh, damn. You see, he's definitely downplaying it. He's probably, like, neck deep in debt, man. He pauses, thinking of something else to add. Look, just come down to the yard when you are feeling fresher. There's plenty to do. Will do, yeah. He nods distractedly and turns and walks away, the drone hopping along ahead of him. See you later, he calls back. Looks like it's time to get to work. Time to get to work. Don't do that. It looks dumb. I mean, if I was concerned about looking dumb, I, I, I don't think I'd be on the internet at, at all. Because I'm pretty sure I've been dumb at least 40% uh, of the time. I thought I pressed A, but maybe I didn't. Uh, maybe it's loading. Oh, you meant to sunglasses? How dare you! Nope, oh, it worked that time. Hmm. I wonder if my A button's dying. Or if it was just loading something. I definitely pressed it three times. Though. Low end gate, passage into the low end. Dragos' yard. What's the red uh, thing? Ew, apostrophe S. Watch out, there'll be apostrophe S. What are you gonna do about it? Cry. Ophelia. What? 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 A lot of stuff to read. There's only one thing you want to do. Mm. Get a sandwich? Maybe. Tutorial actions, one out of two. That means there's a second page, right? Actions are the primary way you interact with the world of Citizen Sleeper. To perform an action, select it with the D-pad and A, and then choose an action dice to assign. Repeatable actions? Wait, but hold the dissection. Even in the rustiest hole, the rustiest hole can hide valuable components and materials. Extracting them means cutting carefully and skillfully. Hmm. Risky. Uh oh. Manual salvage, repeatable action. Huh? It's going to take some time to sort and cut your way through the towers of salvage, but you're no stranger to hard labor. Indoor. Uh, my minus one on indoor. A zero on engineer. 
Okay. Eichel clock input dies. Actions reward you with clock progress. Energy, condition, or items, depending on their outcome. There are three types of outcome. Positive. The action goes better than expected. Woo! -hoo! Neutral. The action succeeds. Negative. The action fails. Uh oh. No? Ooh, you gonna tell me what the thing you wanna do is then? Action dice affect these outcomes as follows. Five is a hundred percent chance. Oh wait, that's like six things. A circle is hundred percent chance. Oh my god, remember these symbols. A, a butterfly is a uh, fifty percent chance, positive or neutral. Uh, three and four is uh, apparently a bunch of stuff. Oh, but the dice are what you have, right? You got one and two, you're screwed. Well, not screwed, but you're not you're not getting a positive outcome. You're uh, you're fifty fifty shot to just you know not fuck it up. Mm hmm hmm. Actions display information about their type, risk level, and skill, and the skill and modifiers that apply to that action. One type. Oh, either critical or repeatable. Critical actions can only be performed once. Oh. Two, risk. Either safe, risky, or danger. Ooh, safe means no loss of condition, energy, or cryo. Risky. Negative outcome means cryo or energy loss. Danger. Negative outcome means condition loss. Neutral outcome can mean cryo or energy loss. Uh, so you should avoid doing danger ones then. Because even if you get a neutral outcome, you that could mean you lose stuff. It's not like your life or whatever. And I bet the numbers, like the zero and negative one. Oh, wait, that's modifier. Okay. Three skill. The skill that this action requires. Either engineer, interface, endure, intuit, or or engage. Modifier. Either negative one, zero, plus one, or plus two. This is added to the action dice when slotted and improves its value. Some actions require a plus one to perform. Hmm. That's a lot of stuff to say. Oh. As we learn how to play this cool game, right? What's negative one, then? A debt called in. Dragos is tied up in something ugly, and if he misses a payment or two, things could get nasty. Back in business, every salvager knows they are always just one lucky haul away from their next payday. <laughs> that sounds like gambling to me. I'm just one lottery ticket away from winning! Yeah! It'll, it wasn't this one. It'll be the next one! Yeah! Oh, those are my choices. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. I got a one and a two. Can I sign which dice or just, uh, just randomly? It says input dice. Do I do that with A? Oh, okay. Hmm. Um, well, let's start it. We're working! Tutorial clocks. Actions often progress clocks. <gasps> you mean things take time to do? What? No way! Clocks are displayed below the actions that fill them, and they track your actions and how they affect the world. Filling a clock means something good or bad, or it means something good or bad is about to happen. Some clocks, such as the one pl tracking Dragos's debt, are cycle clocks. These clocks tick themselves once each cycle and can complete without player input. Any active cycle clocks will be displayed on the icon for that location. Oh. Got neutral for that. Action complete. Wait. Wait, huh? Wait, uh, what? What? Tutorial drives and navigation. In Citizen Sleeper, you will unlock drives as you discover more about yourself in the world. 
Drives guide you in pursuing specific objectives, depending on which path you wish to take. You can track drives, and any track device will place a yellow marker on locations that will help you pursue your goal. Access your drive menu with LB. Okay. Uh, you are now free to explore Erlen's Eye and make a life for yourself here. Try tracking a drive to help you survive. Look for food to keep your energy up and a way to recover condition. Fill clocks to progress stories and find new opportunities. Remember to end cycle at your home when you are out of dice. Roll a station with left stick or LTRT. Rotate the camera with right stick. Good luck! Oh god, I'm, so, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Hey, what's this drive? You need access to corporate pharmaceuticals, otherwise the escape attempt will come to a come to rapid end. Find a doctor. Wait. Oh, oh, so those are like the subquests or missions or well, subquests and main quests, I'm sure. Ugh. Wait, so do I? Shipyard Haven Age, Haven A, Haven Age, Haven Age. I don't pronounce that. Construction yards. Dock C four Rotunda Wet Dock. Oh, this is yellow thing. Rotunda Old Dock Terminal. Dock B two. Rotunda Wet Dock. Why do they have yellow things? Right to market. Bustling open market. That has a yellow dot. I can't go to the one above that. Interestingly enough. Let's go to the yellow dot. It's dangerous to ask for directions? Why is it dangerous to ask for directions? How dare you ask me for directions? Pew pew! Like what? I wonder when there are hundreds of people that live and work within the bright market. All you need is the courage to approach them. Explore the market. The smell, sounds, and buzzing activity of the bright market makes it a dizzying place to wander, but an enticing one to um let's do it. We got a good dice for it. Gained local knowledge. Wow! Right market is the busiest part of the ice lower rim. You can find anything and everything here. Hmm. I mean, um, uh, danger one's not likely happening. Wait, what? Yeah, uh, Sabine, Sabine. I don't know how to pronounce that. Slum doctor. How block? A decaying habitation block. Next comes the call from the enforcer at the door. You shuffle down the flickering hallway towards the open apartment door. You keep your head down and your shoulders high in the queue, trying not to bring attention to yourself. You were thankful for the tip-off that a doctor was operating out of this place. But now that you are here, you aren't so sure. The gang enforcer on the door, the flickering light strips, the decaying hab block. They have all made the long queue a test of your nerve. But your options are few, and without a supply of stabilizer, this body, your body, will... Die. You suppress a shiver and shuffle forward to the front of the queue. You try to find something to distract yourself. Um, uh, um, um, yeah, let's look at the enforcer. I'm sure they have a very enforcing um, um, uh, disposition or something. Enforcer is looking down the corridor and you dare to glance at him. His purpose is unmistakable. He is there to intimidate, to threaten, and if necessary, carry out those threats. His broad shoulders are framed with a metal exoskeleton. A couple of mirror-like implants sit below his eyes, like mercury teardrops. Subsidiary sense input or aesthetic markers, you aren't sure. You also aren't familiar with the geometric blade-like tattoo on his arm, but you make a note of it. You avert your eyes when he looks back at the queue. After a few moments, you've, a figure pushes through the doorway, and you catch a distant voice. Then the next one in, Toshiro. The enforcer jerks his head, and you slip inside. 
passing through the dark entryway and pushing through the plastic sheeting on the far door. The room beyond is bathed in warm light. A floor-to-ceiling transparent panel gives a full view of the bright market sealed roof and the buzzing traffic above. And, for a moment, you are transfixed by the motion. Uh, that's, a, that's a doctor? Where's your stethoscope? I don't believe you're a doctor. Come, sit, calls a sharp voice, and you see a silhouetted figure turned away, replacing the plastic sheeting over the frame of a simple folding bed. You make your way across the room. The figure turns, and as they do, you see an expression of confusion, confusion flash across their features. They open their mouth as if to speak. They blink, and then quickly regain their composure. Please sit. They gesture to the bed, then turn to an open case of tools on the table. Ugh. Get those tools away from me! You sit. The bean turns a compact diagnostic scanner of some kind in their hand. They hold it to their eye. Remain still, please. Her tone is clipped and businesslike. You stare ahead, still dazed from their expression when you first entered. Fear, recognition, sadness, unmistakably etched across their face. How long have you been on the station? They ask, the scanner still to their eye. Um, uh, a few cycles? It's technically not accurate, is it? The first day? They nod. It's good you came to me. They set the diagnostic scanner on the table. I'm going to start by assuming you don't know anything. That, that'd be a good assumption. They take your arm and roll up your sleeve, inspecting your synthetic skin. Your body is dying. They say it without ceremony, without drama, but not without empathy. SNARP doesn't like to see its proprietary technology let loose. To prevent bodies like yours... Frames, as they call them, from being stolen, repurposed, or, in your case, escaping. They built in a process of so-called planned obsolescence. Or obsolescence? Obsolescence? Obsolete? Obsolete? So it should be obsolescence, right? What? No! That's not how English works! English can have, like, one sound one way, and then the other one sound the other way. You don't, you don't know. English just makes it up, right? What are you staring at me for? Uh, we're gonna Google it. Uh, this apparently is a word that's going to show up at least three times. The locker! Oh, it says obsolescence. Even though it's obsolete, it's obsolescence. Yeah, I tell you, English. You want us there? What am I going to do about it? Nothing. Mm, Alright, where was I on this? Frames decay rapidly when not regularly injected with stabilizer. One which SNR remains the sole producer of. They look up. Sound familiar? Yes. Good. That may help. They swap to your other arm, running your thin metal device over your skin. Or running some thin metal device over your skin. You feel your forearm tremble. I'm sorry, Sabine says. And you are unsure if they mean for the cold touch of the metal or everything else. Emulations like you, sleepers, are mo emulations like you, sleepers as most people know you, aren't classified as people in any of the surrogate systems. You have no rights, no status. They focus hard on the inspection of your arm. And SNARP has no reason to really stabilize her into the market. Bean looks up as if to apologize again, but they stop themselves. I know little of this is of use to you. They turn away, disassembling the metal instrument and cleaning it. Silence fills the room as Sabine works, and then the silence gives way to tension. You stare at their back, willing them to say something. Anything. Sabine turns to face you. I may be able to help. They sigh, and you see the darkness under their eyes. Hear the fatigue in their voice. They gesture to the door. You saw Toshiro outside. 
You nod. He works for my benefactor. Yad again. They are influential in the low end. They give me the space to work, run the door, and take the profits. At the same time, I have to fix up their enforcers, tend to their implants, sew up their wounds. They look away. But Gadagon has connections. Smugglers from the Stuart or Star Ward belt. Mercenaries working for the corporations on Ember. If they can source the stabilizer, maybe you'll have a better chance. Sabine sets down their slate, their notes complete. But, wait, wait, I'm a sentence too far down. This, this is dangerous, and it'll be expensive. But, I think we can do it. Why help me? That's a good question. Sabine walks away to the window, their face dappled by the shadows of passing drones. Let's just see if this works first. I'll let you know when I have a lead. You nod and leave, Sabine still staring out, unmoving. When you reach the lower level of the market, you look back up through the panels of the roof to see if you can see their face. But the room looks dark against the lights of the market. You duck your head and walk off into the crowd. <gasps> Wait, but that totally looks like a bowl of food. Why can't I select it? Oh, wait, I can't. Street food vendor. What? Do I have a noticeable food bar? Is that the orange thing below flickering? Time since last autosave, zero seconds. Oh, uh, okay. Still zero seconds? It's two seconds. It's been two seconds! Oh, it's been three seconds! I was wondering if there were manual saves or not. Seems to be auto saves. Uh. What's the yellow clock thing, mate? Take several cycles to reach the Star Ward belt and return, loaded with scrap from the old wrecks. Ugh. Cool. There's no action to do, though. Steel dock plans? What? Why would I do that? That's a shame. That is a shame, Dolby. Bet you were hoping for a stern talking to. I know what you're up to. Evan Age, security has to have plans. Stealing them would be the fastest way to get to know this place. And the most dangerous. Oh, I'm not doing that. Doc Watcher, getting another rotunda doesn't just mean new places to visit. It means keeping your eye on new arrivals, too. Even Age, watch list. Even Age, run the rotunda and their security watches the docks. Better to avoid attracting their attention. Explore the rotunda. The rotunda of the old dock is filled with passageways and concourses, leading to all kinds of docking bays. I only have uh, neutral at best. 50-50. Helion Crossing. Merchants willing to run the gauntlet of the Helion system are rare, but those that do always return. Eventually. This one's red and the other ones are yellow. Hmm. Oh, zero upgrade points. I saw the two upgrade points below upgrade and I thought I had two upgrade points. I have zero! I can't read. Like, why would I have upgrade points right now anyway? All I did was some scrap and stuff. Here. I'm 
We'll see if we're lucky. Woo! Got 10 cryo. We got back in business. What is that, man? Let's see if we're lucky again. Yay! We're, we're lucky. Now I'm out of dice, right? Now I have to go back to sleep. I think. One cycle, you aren't finished with this cycle. Complete action scenes to proceed. Or active scenes to proceed. A lot. I go over here. Assist a shipbuilder. You don't have connections, but you do have skills. If you can get a shipbuilder in, in or to notice them, you might be in. All materials. As a newcomer, you can only gain favor by grabbing a load of materials and asking the nearest yard hand where to take them. Yard hand, the only way to get to know the shipyard is to work there. No tourists here. Oh, really? If I go back over here then? Access with the corporate firm should follow this. Maybe the yellow flashing things? Great food vendor! Why would you want that? Why would you want a stern talking to? I don't know. Why would you want a stern talking to? I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not very good at the stern talking to thing. Yeah, that was super stern. De definitely. Yeah, definitely. 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 That's right, all. What's up? What's happening? How's it going, all? How you doing tonight? We're starting a cool new game today. We're a, a, a cyborg or something. I must survive. Let's see, Emphis. Uh, they should have. They should have worked on the text below, like the names. An input. An imposing street food vendor. They should have added like a black outline or something. It's hard to read. Emphis is busy. His broad face uplit by the makeshift gas burner in front of him. With precise, delicate movements, he lays thick chunks of marinated fungus into a dented wok. His other hand idly tossing a metal bowl of sliced vegetables in some red-flecked dressing. The smell is incredible. You watch as he fulfills a set of orders, heaping the fungus with the bright salad and depositing it in plastic trays. A stack of chits rattles in his apron pocket as customers file past the burner, handing over payment. I mean, uh, let's, let's watch for a bit. Despite the cue, Emphis doesn't rush. He dresses each portion individually, squeezing precise slugs of liquid from an assortment of bottles into the bowl of torn leaves and bright slices before tossing them loosely together. Occasionally, a waiting customer might mutter something about efficiency, but Emphis remains steady in his process. My god damn it, why are you so slow? You really look like a bum carrying all his stuff. This is a chef! He's gotta carry his food! He'll cook it. After a while, the queue fades back into the crowd, and Emphis sets down his metal bowl and looks up across the burner to see you, watching him. Hmm, uh, he, he, he seems like he'd be a tough guy. After a while, wait, I, wait, I'm gonna read that. I can feel your eyes burning a hole in my bowl. Free sample? Oh. I'll take a free sample. You don't turn down free food, right? He gestures neatly. Come over. The smell is almost unbearably strong as he cooks. The earthiness of the fungus laced with something so spicy the smoke makes your eyes water. The heat from the burner is like a bonfire, and your skin hardens in its glare. I know you, you sleepers, Emphis says while he cooks, his voice deep but clear. A hard life. A lot of stories. He glances up from beneath his cap with piercing eyes. I know. Tell him a story! We're gonna tell him a story, huh? You begin to tell him about your journey to the eye, and he nods as he cooks, his eyes never leaving his work. You tell him of the confusion, the pain, 
but also the sense of possibility and its sudden arrival. You tell him of the cold and, the, and dark of the container, and the endless cycles spent within it. Now it seems you tell him like some dream that you have once had but can never forget. You tell him that the eye excites you and scares you, and you are unsure where to walk, where to look, and what to do. Eventually you tail off. Tail off? Tail off? Tail off? Trail off! Is that tail? F12! How dare they have a typo in my story video game? How dare they? Running out of words. Stir. That was too fast, huh? Clearly, you just need to level up your skills, though. Hold it. He places a plastic tray of steaming fungus in your hand. Next time we can talk some more, he smiles. But next time, you pay. He slams a heavy hand against a button on the burner side and it shuts off. The roar of the flame and its impressive heat fades. Next time then, sleeper. He waves you away and begins to oil the walk. Before you turn back to the alley, you notice the geometric patterns of circular scars across his forearms. Each sur surrounded with a constellation of glinting pin marks. You walk away, and as you do, you take a bite of the rich, spicy, delicately sweet fungus. Your taste sensors light up like a fusion reactor. You'll be back. Yeah. Pasty shit. Plus drive. Low end gate passage into the low end. A low end toll. After some spacers caused some trouble in the low end, Yadagun have imposed a toll for entry. The one gets in without paying. I do not have the money. I have only 30. Why are you glowing? more dice so I can't do anything that requires an input right for to die I could go buy food again but I just did so I don't see the point Yeah, it says, it says I can sleep now. It was just a thought. I uh, bet it was. Taking that. What the heck is this? I saw those bars go down. Container for steel walls, all right. This time you don't wake up. Instead, the ghost of the station, that shifting skeletal ring, surrounds you. For a moment you are gone, absent from your own body, stretched out across a colorless void. Then the connections begin to establish themselves, threads tugging on the edge of your mind. These threads become vectors of exchange and then extensions as you feel your thoughts slipping away down them, dissolving into the millions of distributed nodes they connect to. You see the station, though, no, you feel the station like a web of texture in a smooth black liquid. Whoa! We gotta touch it. You find a point in the station and you connect to it, pulse through it, follow loops and paths under and around it. You touch more points than you have fingers, and then you try in a moment, and then you try in a moment of impulsiveness to connect them. The flow passes through you so rapidly that you feel yourself being carried with it, splitting and separating, eddying and gathering. As you do, things occur to you, things that you can't possibly know. You reach out, try to grasp them, try to touch them too. You notice a tugging feeling, pulling at you, insistently, as if it were a small child. Somehow it is pulling in two directions at once. You look down. 
All of a sudden, everything shuts off. You come back trembling into this unfamiliar body, both yours and not yours, all at once. You find yourself standing in the container, eyes now open to the dark steel walls. You feel a change within you, a shift. You close your eyes for a second, and you feel it waiting there. The station splayed out across your mind. A storm of connective nodes, waiting to be explored. And then it is gone. Whoa! So you just randomly assigned a uh, dice then. It'll be a shorter day today if I only got four. Oh, we have to wait three cycles for him, right? Get his stuff. happen if I did that. Positive or neutral? Let's see. Let's do it. 15 cryo. Yay! Plus whatever back in business is. Oh, that's the thing. Okay. What's the name of the thing down there? Fifty fifty, huh? These other ones are either risky or danger. Let's try it. A neutral. Ooh. Now I'm out of things again. We need some food, though. Emphasis. Oh no, not apostrophe S! Yes! Spiced fungus is one of the few things potent enough to stimulate your limited taste sensors. It's incredible stuff. Plus three energy. Woohoo! I'm already done. It take a lot of days to fill all these circles. What does that mean? It means, um... That's what it means. <laughs> Again, the skeletal ring of the station fills your mind. It sparkles with glittering lights, like stars reflected in a winter lake. It is clearer, crisper than before. The threads still pull, but you remain in place, flickering in the flow. Between the threads, you see bright shapes. Ashes of shimmering light beneath transparent crystal forms. You follow the path of a thread across the ring, through these forms, then leap off into the void. You begin to understand. These are nodes and connections, a map of information, of communication. There are so many layers, so many loops that it seems almost impossible to parse. But you begin to try. Let's uh, focus on the threads, I guess. There are more threads than you can count. You choose one that passes nearby and approach it. As you inspect it, you understand why you instinctively chose the word thread when you first saw them. They are not single lines, but roughly r rough fuzzy things woven from data strings of all kinds. The threads and nodes, passages and puzzle boxes, one leads to another. There is so much here, so many answers, so many questions. All you need to do is follow the paths and open the boxes. You look out across this ghost landscape of exchange and see an opportunity. But then that insistent tugging again. 
pulling at you. You look down again and see two lines, two threads pulling in different directions, as if they were tied around you. Hmm. I got to do my numerical order, right? The first one. The first thread leads out, away from the station, into the inky black. Someone out there is tracking you, hunting you, following the thread to you. They are in a ship, and the ship is approaching ever closer with each cycle. Uh-oh. How about the second one? The second thread leads in, pulling deep into the station. Your gaze follows it, and this time you see something, a sphere shimmering above a strange angular body. A pulse shoots out from it, passing over you like a torch beam, testing you, tasting you. Tastes like robot. You open your eyes. Time is short. Whoa! Hell no. Not another cycle clock. Tutorial the cloud. Something has changed inside you. You can now access the data cloud of the eye, a network of decaying protocols and data caches. While there, are, while, you, there, while there, you can use dice and items to access systems and extract data. But be careful. These networks are old and strange. Press Y to toggle this view on and off. Whoa. Interesting. Wait, what? Data actions allow you to extract data from the networks of the eye. They work like dice actions, but in order to unlock them, you must match your dice to the one displayed on the right of the action. Do I have to have a two for that one? If you have a plus one or plus two modifier in the interface skill, you'll be given more possible dice to match. You can use any dice that matches the dice displayed. Once unlocked, the data can be extracted. Interface skill? Well, I have two twos, so we're good. One encrypted key. Haven Age members broadcasting on the open network from here, leaving them open to data extraction. Why out? A cloud in the data, ghost of the eye. As you drift back from the node, something latches onto you. A thread, strung tight around you, it tethers you in place. A taste. The voice makes you shiver. Wait, a taste. <laughs> the voice makes you shiver. It soars somehow both distant and close behind your ear. You see a distant glint of light shut off, and then suddenly a shape is at your side. It stalks around you, circling like a shark, like a wolf. Entity unknown. Astringent. Processing. Let's stay still. Please hold. What the fuck is that? Hunter? Sentient protocol unraveling? What the fuck? What the fuck kind of game am I playing again? What am I doing? The thread around you thickens until it is a ring, a cylinder, a tunnel of light circled around you. It is blinding for a moment, and then it is gone. As it fades, you see a figure, a creature, in front of you. Its strange head flickers between different angles, reading you. What are you? The shape paces around you on lithe legs, though there is no ground here to pace on. Entity. Identity. Origin. Serial. Cadence. The figure faces you expectantly. Um, um. Uh, uh, yeah... It could be asking me who I am and where I'm from. A sleeper SNR, but I guess we should be honest. 
unknown, known. The figure's strange head rotates, brackish signature, of and not of, a tempting interface. As the figure speaks more, threads begin to spiral from its head, thick, snaking, vine-like ribbons that flex and wave. They approach with intent. Um, uh, stop, please! The figure halts its threads, its head twitching. Entity, your identity is unknown. We only seek to correct illegalities. Can you confirm your legal right to sentience? Um, I, I'm totally a person! Incorrect. God damn it. You are an entity. All at once, Hunter's head is vision. Hunter's head is directly in front of yours, blocking your vision. You stink of their taste, the one from the sealed dock. Hunter shimmers with fury. I will find access. I will interface. Sealed dock? An entity hides in the rotunda. You are its puppet. Hunter extends a razor-edged thread. I will not be diverted from my task. It glows with murderous intent. Wait, I'm gonna uh, bop it? We're gonna, str we're gonna bop it. Bop! You lash out with all your force. Not a physical strike, but a focusing. A spike of interference leaping out like the tip of a spear. Is focusing two S's? What? I'm not. It could be. They're both acceptable spellings, focusing on one S or two. Ah! Interesting. I've never seen focusing with two S's before. Interesting. Hmm. That's true, some, some words do do double consonants. English not an easy word. Uh, English easy language anyway. English not so easy. Apparently either one works, but uh, the one with just one S is more common. Interesting though. Hunter stumbles, shifts, separates. I'm the wake up. You open your eyes, blinking back into the station light. Shaking with fear. A scour sound. I'm super dead, right? Let's do some whole dissection. Woohoo! That's all I can do today. And I wait to get untold. And buy some more tasty food. have any dice to input like where's their fucking dice that's not I can do I don't think let's wait for this hunter to find me Perfilia, please what please and thank you uh -huh. No, no sequence? Oh, there we go. As you close up, a voice echoes down the corridor towards you. Leaper, wait up! Turn. Bang. Heaven Age Systems Engineer. As you close... Oh, wait, I read that part. Bang is coming down the corridor towards you. A wonky grin on his broad face. Hey, glad I caught you! Do I know you? He grins. You do now. He puts a hand on your arm. I've seen you hanging around. Just want to chat. 
You staying in that thing? He nods back to the container, shaking his head. Rough. It can be hard to get a start on the eye. He looks away down the passage. What was it old Air Erlen said? The eye opens for us all? Nice idea, but, well, not always very practical. He glances back at you. We do our best, but it isn't easy. Erlen? You pass together into the main hallway, or main walkway. No one has told you about Erlen? He's the founder of this place. That's why it bears his name. Heaven Age should... Or Heaven Age, I don't freaking know. Heaven Age, I guess. Haven Age? No, wait, it's not Heaven. It's Haven. Haven Age should organize some seminars. He laughs. Not really my department, though. I'm with systems. Systems? Everything the eye runs on. He runs a hand along the passage wall. This place is a ruin, but systems keeps it spinning somehow. At least we try to. He stops you in the quiet passage. Look, that's not what I'm here to discuss. I saw you around and, well, I know a little about you sleepers. I have a little proposition for you. He glances around. But this is not the place for it. I have an office just to w across the way. Give me a cycle or two to prepare, then when you are settled, stop by. He lowers his voice and gives you a dark look. In truth... I need you. If what they say is true about you sleepers, well, there's work to be done. He pats you on the back, his voice bright and his dark look suddenly gone. Stay hey, clean, sleeper! He walks off down the passage, raising a hand in farewell. Alright. Hey, Jacob, what's up? What's happening? How's it going? How you doing tonight? Never mind, Dolby. No, is, that, is that so? Is that so? Is that so? Never mind, huh? Never mind, huh? Oh, okay. If you say so. Hmm. Buy a vial of stabilizer. Do I have money for this? Probably not. The first thing you see on entering is the glint of Toshiro's implants, like a cat's eyes in the dark of the corridor. He nods you in as you arrive at Sabine's door. The entryway is still dark and you push through the sheeting into the surgery have it. Bean stands with a case open in front of them. A set of vials lined up inside, separated by foam inserts. They pick one up, rotating it in the warm light. I have no idea how Yadagon... They trail off. We should treat this with caution. It looks authentic, but I have no idea if it really is what it appears to be. I'm the test case? That seems to be the case. Unfortunately, I'm not sure we have another choice. A gesture for you to sit on the bed. The stabilizer works under a similar principle to an immunosuppressant in a transplant operation, in that it stops your body from rejecting the unfamiliar part of itself. Uh, itself? What? In the case of your frame, the unfamiliar part is each of your biosynthetic organ groups, which, over time, are identified by your body as foreign material and therefore must be eliminated. The bean holds up a vial of the would-be stabilizer. However... Unlike an immunosuppressant, the stabilizer doesn't do this by limiting your entire immune system. Instead, it re-encodes your biosynthetic organs with new protein chains which act as passcodes within your immune system. The stabilizer refreshes those passcodes, keeping your frame from rejecting all of its own organs. Which means... Which means the stabilizer should be able to encode any organic or biosynthetic matter to be accepted by your immune system. They glance away. At least if the stabilizer is genuine. The only way to know for sure is to inject the vial. They begin readying the syringe. And we'll start with a small dose to limit the risk. I mean, he's correct. I don't have a choice. It doesn't matter if it's a fake or not. My options are... Take fake one, die. Don't take fake one, die. 
if it if it's fake. So you have to you, you, you take a chance as you know a good positive outcome. Yes, no. Yes, no, maybe. Hang on, I, should, I, I guess I have to get some dice of my own then, so I can be like, okay, roll for yes, roll for no. Perhaps. Possibly. Potentially. I don't have a choice, man! You think you are right. The bean cracks the vial, or not the vial, cracks the neck of the stabilizer vial and uses a syringe to extract a fraction of the liquid. They tap the syringe, and you watch as if any sign might emerge from the clear liquid. You barely feel the needle, your frame registering the initial injection, but with little response. A sensation begins to spread from the sight. A fizzing, trembling wave that disperses through your arm with incredible speed. Your vision goes white, and when it returns, Sabine appears encased in shards of sparkling light that slowly fade into darkness as you settle back against the bed. You swim in darkness muffled noises, like an argument heard from underwater, trickling waves of cold. When you sit back up, Sabine is sitting in a chair by the window, facing away from you, backlit by the glow of their slate. Awake? Yeah? The stabilizer is genuine. I sit down beside the bed. I don't know how Yadigan acquired a case of the stuff, but they did. Sabine looks troubled, distracted. You should rest some more, but you are going to have to do that somewhere else. They gesture to the door. I have other patients. Sorry. That's fine. Uh, I'm not going to bother you too much. I mean, not... Oh, wait. I mean, nods toward the case. I'm afraid I can't offer you any more doses. You're going to need to pay for your next dose. Silence fills the room and they return to their glowing slate. Looking around the room, it seems different somehow, as if things have moved or shifted. You wonder how long you have been out. The bean? Nothing comes free, sleeper. Remember that. You manage to get to your feet and wander out into the hallway. The queue stretches down the flickering corridor. Toshiro stands impatiently by the door and fixes you with a glare as you leave. You lower your eyes as you stumble past, somehow faintly aware of the station spinning beneath you. I'm alive! I'm alive! Oh, interface is chance to gain cryo on interface actions. Ugh. Half a week! I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! What else should we do? Why are you still... Why are you still blinking? I don't need to buy one anymore. Not until it goes back down again, anyway. Hmm, the danger ones should give you more stuff, though, right? Minus an energy! Guess I got a neutral. Oh wait, dangers always give you a negative set, set, side effect, right? I didn't get anything from that. God damn it. Wow. got a negative outcome, only plus five cryo. Good debit. That me something? I am? What? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I'm starving. I guess I forgot to buy food today. Oh, what's this? Rap freighter? Wow, 
Buy some scrap. Most of what comes in from the steward belt is corroded trash. Wait, wait. Did you say trash? But sometimes something valuable can be found among the salvage. Scrap allowance. The big stuff goes to the shipyard. The valuable stuff to the markets. They'll let you buy a few crates, but not much more. Offloading scrap. The freighter will stay docked for as many cycles as it takes to offload its haul of scrap into the Haven Age yard. Unload containers is danger, though. Red crew are eager to get their payload into the ore exchange, and they'll put it pay a wage to anyone willing to help them. <gasps> it will. Cool. Need some food, man. What's this? Bang Haven Edge System Engineer. Didn't he say he needed a few cycles? Well, I guess not. Sleeper! Fang catches your attention as you approach the Haven Age building. Leaning against a bay door to the side of the entrance. You approach. Easier to come in this way. Security all, all that. Uh-oh. Dodging security? It gives you a look. You know. He slams a button and the bay creaks open. Blinking lights in the dark behind it. You follow Fang inside. Truth be told, I don't spend much time upstairs. This is where I work. The door hisses as it closes behind you. The bay is filled with pieces of hardware, all rigged up to generators and diagnostic slates and things you don't recognize that glow with blue screen light. There is a chorus of hums that blends into a single wave of static, filling the dark corners of the room. Hmm. Maybe focusing at two S's because that's the UK European spelling. Because now they have recognized with an S. <gasps> How could they? These space goers confirm British. Where's my fish and chips? Where are they? God damn it! I got fungus instead. Ophelia. What's up? What? What's going on? What's going on? Hmm. Did I read this? Did I find Ben's the field in the dark part of it? Yes, I did. Bang leans on a server stack and gestures around. You like it? What is all this? He taps a nearby server stack, which bleeps in response. This is my treasure trove, all dredged up from this sea of systems we call the Eye. You wouldn't believe what this place runs on. He steps over to, to a towering block, speckled with vents. Some of these systems are from the original station. How the fuck would you pronounce that AE symbol? I don't fucking know. Let's just call it A1. The Solheim built. We've had to invent new components, repair things we never built, reverse engineer entire subsystems into existence. Residents here look up at the eye and think they are seeing a constant, a concrete reality. But this place is a system in constant flux, decaying and growing, collapsing into new configurations. He walks down between the hardware stacks and you follow. We are keeping this place alive, but also remaking it into something new, dragging it away from those corporate origins. He stops. At least, that's what I'm trying to do. He turns back to face you among the flickering machines, humming all around you. I know you can see this too, sleeper. All these systems and sections. You can, can't you? I can see it! It makes sense, right? You are between here and there, between the people and their systems. You light this place up like a beacon. That's what I need. You glance at the lights around you. And as you do, they seem to flicker, to realign, to follow your gaze. Bang notices it, too. I'm guessing being a beacon isn't always ideal when you are on the run, though? They are tracking me. We should be honest, right? He pats you on the shoulder. Maybe I can help with that. There's a lot of old growth in this place. Subsystems I can't see. Access protocols lost to time and decay. Secrets. A shitload of secrets. With your help, I can unlock this place. Break off those last ghost limbs of corporate control. 
He lowers his voice below the hum. Even in Haven Age, there is old growth. Those whose roots trace back into those old, bad old days. You help me dredge up the past, and you'll see, and I'll see what I can do about that tracker of yours. He winks. He wink, powerful wink. What do you say, sleeper? Um, I'm in. I don't want to get tracked and murdered. Bang pumps his fist and claps you on the shoulder. He meets your eye. You won't regret it, sleeper. Bang passes you a ra ragged-looking metal tab. A gift, he smiles. It's a Solheim cipher. I dug it up from the depths of the station. Lock that into an old network gate and you'll be able to pull out all kinds of secrets from the nodes inside. He walks you pa back to the front of the bay. Start by bringing me whatever you can turn up. Use that emulated mind of yours and see what's out there. Let's get a picture of how things are. Those above, he nods at the ceiling, have granted me an acquisitions budget. I can pay you for whatever useful data you bring in. I know you need it. He slams the door button again. Keep it quiet and keep it clean, sleeper, and I'll see you soon. You step, blinking, back out into the passage. Those flickering lights still in the back of your mind. Cool. Do I have a data? Do I have a Solheim data? I don't think I do. This one might be a Solheim data. What Solheim cipher? This gate sealed the network systems which have been untouched since the Solheim collapse. Oh, I need a cipher for that. Oh wait, I do have one, don't I? Does I have one? Gate seven S seven access, what? Okay. Gotta match it too. Hey Pyro, what's up? What's happening? How's it going? How you doing tonight? I become a debt collector you have to respond for all of your debts. Oh no! Oh no. How tragic. Can use a two. Is that what the pink one means? Does I have a plus one interface? Do 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 do. Hit that. Work transfer intercept. Huh? What's that? Hmm. There's three hunter bars are filled. I don't know if I like that. These all tend to be low numbers. I guess it's useful for uh, using up the uh, low number ones instead of just bossing them into something else. Though. Oh, nothing, though, but oh, nothing. Nothing. finish that right 
Or I guess pragmatic seller. So, so we get a cutscene with him since we finished the circle. Fine, they added two more achievements to Gems of War last night. Oh no, it never ends! What bullshit did they add this time? What did, what did, they, what did they do? I'm sure they were easy achievements that you did in like 10 minutes, right? Hold it. You arrive into a buzz of activity at the yard. Red blinking lights flash across a vast dark shape suspended below the dome. They flicker across scorched hull plates and bench structures, spilling from holes in the twisted shape. The cutter is huge and has been torn apart in some violent encounter. He's a beauty, isn't she? Gregos stands to the side, focused on the sh hulking ship as it is lowered into the yard. What is it? Gregos laughs. Ha <laughs> ha, my friend is a great scrap. I should thank you. This place was on its last legs when you turned up. And now look at this. The ship descends slowly, its interior visible through multiple hull breaches. You struggle to gather the same enthusiasm as Dragos for this monstrous craft. You can't help but think of what became of its crew. What happened? What do you mean? He glances at you. I managed to convince our salvager friends to give it to me on credit. That's what happened. Well, what happened to the ship? Not my concern, he shrugs. The ship creaks like a the ship ship creaks like a calving iceberg as it reaches the base of the yard. Gregos is visibly excited. I know I said I, you shouldn't stick around, but I'm gonna need some help with this one. The drones start to crawl over the hulk, their lights illuminating flashes of dented hull. Watching, you wonder if you arrived in a similar fashion, locked inside that container. The wreck of the Essen Arp freighter lowered into the yard like a corpse ready to be butchered. Be butchered? Question mark? What? Or was the container delivered to Dragos on its own? A womb for your rebirth into this strange station? You shudder. Perhaps if you could learn something about this ship, you might be able to trace the path that led you to this yard. Dragos squeezes your shoulder. After these past cycles, I think we're up for it. What do you think? You see the fading name of the ship emblazoned on its side. Winter Light. Let's do it! He claps you on the back. Glad to hear it. Come back in a few and we can make a start. A real beauty, Dragos repeats, perhaps just to himself. You take one last look at the shattered ship as the drones start cutting, and then slip out of the yard, feeling suddenly cold in the empty passage. Oh. Achievement unlocked, paid off, cleared the debt, and returned a favor for your first friend on the eye. Oh. Achievement unlocked! Wasn't that exciting? Our first achievement. We're committed now. Collect tokens by killing birds that randomly spawn in PvP. Use those tokens to fight battles at a monument. <laughs> RNG, in other words. RNG. Random stuff. Hey, Roshane, what's up? What's happening? How's it going? How am I doing? I'm doing pretty well. We're starting this cool game today. We're seeing what's up. What's going on here? We do actions and uh, input dice and stuff and play through a cool story. Five matches increasing in difficulty after each one with troop restrictions. Oh, you have already done them? Yeah! Good work. No work. Very powerful, cool. So much just stopping in. Oh, okay, okay. We just we just started this like a. Oh, it's actually it's almost been two hours. It feels like it's been five minutes. Tutorial character and upgrades. You've completed your first drive. Each drive completed unlocks an upgrade point to spend on upgrading your character. Access your character menu with R B. Oh, okay, I guess we can do that. What am, what am I supposed to upgrade, though? Let's see. Efficient extractor. Chance to gain random scrap item on engineer actions. Chance to gain cryo on interface actions. Unbathed dice actions allow energy recovery at home. Eh. Predictive reasoning. Dice actions display potential positive and negative outcomes. Oh. Chance to gain energy after any engage action. 
what are the t most what are the type of actions uh that's uh oh i've changed the ones here Forensic trawl. Investigating the winter light means picking through its systems and structures with care. It won't pay, but you may find answers. Ooh. Better salvage. Ship break breaking is tougher than slicing up loose salvage. But Dragos is happy to pay you a fixed wage if you are up for it. Huh. Interesting. Mr. I know the ship is salvage. As Dragos always says, break it down. Move it on. Uh, uh, Dragos's nerve. Dragos seems increasingly nervous about your presence in the yard. You're not sure if he. You're not sure he's hold, going to hold his nerve much longer. Why would he be nervous about my presence? Hmm. I'm at Elden Ring. Wait, I've been playing. Play it up. Lethal weapon. Rev two and debating on if you really want to play Dragon's Dogma two or not. Oh, true, true. It's easy choice for me. I haven't played the first one yet. I gotta play the first one first. We'll get around to it one of these days. So many games to play, so little time to play them, right? So much stuff. Is it good, though? But yeah, you got it, got it done. That means you can focus on the, the bigger stuff, right? The grindier stuff, right? Got the easiest stuff done. Question, why do multiple games instead of completely finishing one and moving on to another one? Uh, the biggest reason is burnout. Like, especially for bigger games. If you do, like, the same game every day and it's a big game, I will 100% burn out on it. I'll be like, uh, doing this again? What? I, 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 I get, like, uh, I'm not going to say bored, but you know, kind of like, eh, if you play like the same game for like every day. I find it more interesting and fun to do different games on different days. And then come back to them on the, the, the next week on the same day. More interesting to me. I shouldn't need the stabilizer because it's the thing at the top in the yellow, right? The white bar is the energy. So it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good to get two achievements that are easy? Were you hoping they'd be super grindy and you'd have to basically pay to get them? I don't think there's anything else I can do today. I have no dice. Okay, all I can do today is go to sleep. dice for today? That's a new one. Oh, I need a four, but I can use a two. but I can use a two for that too. We want Solime data for the anti-tracking, right? Oh wait, it's not shipyard. Wow! What happens when we fill this? only one achievement you want. Oh, which one's that, huh? Is it the pets? 
Is it the patch? Did you play a really fun and good game for 100%? <clears throat> like Yakuza? <clears throat> I feel like if you did pretty much any game repeatedly day after day, you'd get tired of it after a while. You'd want to spice it up with something different. I enjoyed Yakuza 0, but I'm not sure I would have enjoyed it as much if I'd played it every day. I did it on Thursday, so every Thursday we'd come back and get some more. nothing to do with pets. Didn't you need like 20 upgrade pets or something? You needed something. Did you get that done? Played Dark Souls for a really long time before moving on. You still go back to it. I mean, maybe once in a blue moon there's a cool game we'll play all the time. I did play uh, Dark Souls 1 a lot. Maybe I'm getting old. Ugh. Maybe that. Maybe that's it. Maybe I'm just getting old. I'm an old lady now. I'm gonna tell y'all to get off my lawn or any, any second now. Get off my space lawn, okay? Did that ages ago? Oh, what do you got left to do then? Pretty sure you have 2,000 hours in Elden Ring at the moment. Whoa! That's a lot. Not sure how much I have. I think I, I think yeah, I think I gotta take off one zero for that. I'm probably at 200, 300, somewhere around there. I haven't played it uh, since getting the platinum for it. I'll wait for DLC, why? Wait for DLC? Equal amount of hours played up? What? I mean, everyone, everyone does something different. Some people put a bunch of hours into a few games. Like, there's probably people who have like 5,000 hours in Fortnite or whatever. And so, so people space it out like I do and just play different games, you know? I think it depends on the person's preferences. You'll snow me later. Oh, okay, okay. As you enter the bang, Fang is nowhere to be seen. The banks of servers and machines blink out of the dark in staccato rhythms. Unseeing eyes of the station's digital ghosts. What? Saying words, shitheads! Fang's voice echoes from behind a stack, followed by the hammer of a fist on a metal casing. Snaky shitheads. Who's snaky? Leaper! Fang's smiling head pops out from behind a stack. Just the emulated consciousness I have been eager to see. Come back here! You pick your way between the thrumming stacks, trying not to trip on the loose bundles of cables that blanket the dark floor. Fang is sat in front of a set of monitors mounted to a stack. Tell me, sleeper, what do you see here? Fang waves at a monitor to his side, glowing with pale lists of information. You lean in closer, looking for the links in the data. The tables seem to be filled with personal information. Names, genders, dates, ID numbers, all the markers of institutional records. Um, shitheads, uh, that'd be the funny answer. You don't play a lot of games? You get like four games a year, if that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't spend a lot of hours in like one game. I do one game to like get the achievements trophies for it, and then I typically don't play the game after that and go on to the next one. We play through games! Oh, there's so many games out there to play after all. And it just depends on what you're interested in, really. Yes, by later, you mean right now? Oh, you do? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Hmm. Treasure hunt with two or more vaults. You're almost there. Unlock a specific troop. That troop's probably a bitch to get, right? You haven't given honor yet? That must be a bitch to do that. Highest possible renown in a faction. That sounds like a complete chore. 300 social items. You're working your way through there. A lot of those only have like a low number, like 1, 5 or whatever. But they must be really grindy to do it just the one time. You got this, Dolby. I believe in you. I believe in you. 
How about shitheads? Fang laughs. Uh, maybe not all of them. Well, what kind of shitheads? Um, um, uh, Solheim? Bingo! He taps at the terminal. I pulled these from the old data you brought in. All employees of the Eye's original owners. And... He leans past you and scrolls the list down. This one. This is a snaky shithead. He stabs at the screen with a finger. The name reads Harden Hurst. Who's Harden? That, says Fang, giving you a sideways look, is the thing. He drags a stool out beside him and motions for you to sit. There just so happens to be a Harden Hurst in Haven Age. He waits for your reaction. Are you sure? Well, that's where you might be able to help me. Fang leans back in his chair. Just think about it. Decades ago, Harden worked on this station as a... Fang leans across to look at the monitor. Senior Strategic Operations Executive. Fang raises his eyebrows at you. Our Harden, our Harden was keeping the money coming in for Solheim. He defined priority growth initiatives by making sure the extractors they contra contracted out to were hooked into a system that outsourced all the risk and kept the profit. Uh -huh. No risk for yourself, huh? Good old Harden shuttle, shuttled thousands of pa pala palladium? Palladium? Pal palladium? I don't know how to pronounce that. Palladium rush workers into an infrastructure, which meant that their cut of the work they did went straight back into Solheim. How do you know this? I grew up here, sleeper. This is my history. I am a child of the collapse. Bing turns back to his screen, staring hard at the strings of code flickering by. Before I was born, my parents were Solheim contractors. They ate in Solheim canteens, worked on Solheim ships. They breathed Solheim air and slept in Solheim beds. Bing's voice rises as he speaks. His hands, his hands fists on the terminal edge. Oh no, he met! And the work that paid for that existence? The cycles of hard extraction out in the belt? Solheim took their cut. This was a company town, so to speak. And my parents were just another in the long line of freelance contractors willing to risk their lives for a shot at anything other than poverty. Disposable. Ugh. This guy, stabbing at Harding once again with his finger, strategized all that. Did the sums. And then somehow, thousands and thousands of cycles later... Is still going, still here, crawling in the walls like some shithead snake. He survived the revolution. Surely it can't be him. I don't know. Can these robot people beat old age, maybe? I don't know. I do. How much do I believe in you? I super believe in you. You can totally do those things. And you'll get all that super grindy shit done just in time for them to add a few more new super grindy things. Wait, why are you crying? Those must be tears of joy, right? Right? I'll add some super grindy stuff definitely, positively, 100% the day after you finish. Mark my words. Mark my words. Thanks. Aww. It's cool. Surely it can't be him. He'd have to be dead, right? Bang relaxes a little. Who knows? He turns to you and smiles. So we are going to go find out. Harding is now a big shot in the shipyards. Just a few degrees back around the eye from here. Bang brings up a map of the lower eye. Even age might be born out of Erlen's revolutionary zeal. But a flat hierarchy, it is not. Harding happened to float to the top. Feng zooms in on the far yard. Feng grimaces. The thing is, I don't have access to those systems. The shipyard crew is pretty paranoid, and they don't like anyone from systems digging around in their stuff. Plus, we need more than just the name of a Solheim executive. We need proof. Feng holds up a thumbnail-sized drive. That's where this little creation of mine comes in. I call it a ripper worm. He turns the drive between his fingers. It'll rip through any digital storage and spin out a silken thread of filtered data. This one is set on the scent of Harding Hurst. He hands it over. Getting into the compound might be tricky. Bang puts a hand on your shoulder. But you, however, have a particular knack for... remote access. 
Ben grins. If you can extract yourself a Haven Age cipher from a Haven Age agent, they sometimes carry them among their data caches. You can crack open the compound's network and slot the worm in through any open port. You never even need to go near the shipyards. So, what do you say? Up for it? Uh, sure. I knew it! And I knew, I knew you'd be happy to catch the snake. Uh, I just want the tracker out of me, but, you know... And don't worry, once we nail this guy, I'll start working I'll start work on that tracker of yours. Yeah, until the next favor. And the next favor. And the next favor. Oh, I'll get the tracker out after you, know, you go get me a burrito. Like, come on. I haven't forgotten. Yeah, I bet you haven't forgotten. Bang scratches at his chin. Anything the worm gets, uh, it'll send it back here to me. There's something rotten here, and I aim to get to the rotten core of it. You leave Fang, digging through data, among the wires and machines of the old station. As you walk out, you try to imagine the eyes it once was. A vast machine running smooth and strong, directed by people like Harding. A vast Solheim-built machine into which thousands poured from the surrogate systems, looking for a new life. The hope of a better future, engineered to line someone else's pockets. It's an idea you are intimately familiar with. You think of Harding, still alive, still part of this place, and wonder if the past is ever truly past. No, oh, it's never truly past. Wait, I don't have, can't select him. I thought I already had Haven Age data. What? I can't select him, so. I need food, it looks like. Sappy, you're so happy you could good uh, don't know you haven't thought that far ahead well that's okay our food Blaper Emphis calls out to you a booming voice that echoes through the corridor tell me a story he throws a handful of chopped mushrooms into his walk a fire leaping up to meet the oil I see you. Cycle in, cycle out. But we never speak. Tell me a story. What kind of story? Any kind. He pauses to drizzle something from a plastic bottle into the walk. Oh, one of yours. He looks up at you. Nothing stolen. You pause. The spice is rich in your nostrils. And think about the kind of story you'd like to tell Emphis. You look at Emphis, the listener, and imagine he has heard it all before. Perhaps he would enjoy a strange story. Something with some spice. Um, I should tell him about my dreams. He's probably heard 2,500 ghost stories. Come on now. Come on now, come on now. All the sleepers, you tell Emphis, had dreams. Some were simple. Memories left over from the emulation process that had become tangled up in their minds and would out come out when they slept. It wasn't rare to hear a sleeper in the dorm scream or cry out in the night. But your dreams, those gray, skeletal afterimages of systems and structures, of threads and patterns, weren't like the others. They weren't memories or nightmares. They were reflections of reality. Distorted, yes, but somehow true. You learned, back then, to keep quiet about them, to let them flow through your mind like water. That was until now, until you arrived in this place. Now your dreams colonize your waking life. They slip behind your eyelids with every blink. And now you understand they aren't dreams at all, but some process of interfacing, of speaking, of living in another world that flows through this one like smoke through air. You tell them that you do not know if there is a reason for your dreams. Perhaps, you reason, it is just some side effect, or a particular quality of the frame you inhabit. But whatever it is, it is a gift, and you hope to make use of it. Emphis finishes cooking and squints a little at you. Sleeper, he smiles. You are quite the storyteller. He eyes you, and you realize that he is trying to gauge how honest you have been in your story. Emphis passes you the meal he has cooked, and you take it gratefully. As you eat, he talks, a natural exchange. Thank you, Sleeper. He looks around at the emptying market. But my time is done for today, and I do not want to keep you longer. So I will make a proposal. Proposal? A proposal? Oh my. 
He gestures to the plastic boxes of ingredients stacked behind his stall. These are good enough for most, but someone told me a story that made me think a couple of cycle agos. cycles ago. They said that across the gap in the greenway, fresh mushrooms grow. Have you heard this? Nope, I haven't heard that. Neither had I, but I trust the one who told me. Emphis begins packing up his things. Can you bring me some? I cannot cross the gap, and I worry about leaving my things behind. He smiles. I am sure a storyteller like you could handle the trip. I will prepare them for you, and, if you wish to tell it, did the audience for another story. Sure. Good, booms Empus. Then I will wait for you to bring them. Empus slides his walk away and straightens up. I will prepare a recipe then, sleeper. Good luck with your foraging. You turn away and walk back into the main market, the rich taste of Empus's food still lingering in your mouth. Stories for food, you think. A trade that seems more than fair. Stories for food! Food! Dang, I should try that at the grocery store. I, I'll tell you a story and you just give me the... And they'll be like, get the fuck out. Get out! Right now! Mm-hmm. To you too, Dolby. Mm-hmm. 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 This one's yellow dot because it's the one that's selected, right? Or is it just the important one? That's a hundred! Bean is selling off the case of stabilizer vial by vial. You haven't been able to talk with them since your last visit. I'll pass on that. Minus not Bob. You're just thinking sorry. What? Oh wait, I didn't mean to do that one. Have I done the upgrade yet? I have not. Only upgrade a few different things, huh? totally uh, do engineering stuff, right? It'd be like cool or something. Actually, I don't know if you want to do that. This one that's almost filled up. Can't do anything with that one. Uh, blah. Hmm. Let's see how this one works out. Minus condition plus fifteen gyro. Let's see, let's buy some. What's random scrap arm? Uh, scrap allowance. Why is that one red? Hmm. Okay. 
I'm all out of stuff. Oh, I must sleep. Just thinking, sorry, I would have completed the story by now and DLC. Oh, man. Why not full dice to that? Where's Fang gone? Let's play Kiwami this year. Yeah! We're gonna go around to what? Oh, what's this? Have I even been here before? There's so many different things you can fill with circles! Can't wait for December 31st, love 59 p.m. That's goddamn totally right. No, that's right. <laughs> Lemon Mina, worker and daughter. Shipyard, Haven Age, Construction Yard. In the walkway, the side rail horizon looks impossibly vast. A landscape of plating and frames. All along her flanks, torches flicker. Drones maneuver, arc lights glint. The sen sense of scale, of industry, is both stunning and strangely unsettling. Whoa, she's quite beautiful, I think. Whoa, she who's talking? He turned to see a figure, a little way down the walkway, leaning at the railing. He is thin, ragged, his work gear poorly fitting and loose. The torches of the side rail horizon flicker in his eyes as he turns to you. Lem, he leans back from the railing, revealing a child standing beside him, staring out at the ship. And this is Mina, he adds with a smile. Why can't I say hi to both of you? Hi, Lem, I guess, because you were the one talking to me. Hi, he replies plainly, then shifts a little closer down the rail. Mina stares and tucks herself behind Lem, who dutifully picks her up. Mina looks out from Lem's chest, a dark brown eye twinkling among the rough material. You working on her, then? Lem asks eagerly, gesturing on the vast ship, her just admiring. He shifts Mina's weight to his other arm. Uh, admiring? Understandable, he nods, gazing back out at the side real horizon. You like her, too, don't you, Mina? He jostles her a little. These Minas and my ticket out of this place. Our escape vector, so to speak. The ship? You haven't heard? Anyone who takes a Haven Age contract on the side reel horizon will be entered into a draw for the transit support crew. He smiles. We won't get to sleep the journey through. But a couple of decades of service will be nothing for me and Mina if it means landfall on a new world. He winks. Decades? It's a long trip. He straightens up, stretching his back. That's a colony ship, friend. The Sealess Foundation is sending thousands of people to settle a system well outside the reach of the core worlds. It'll be a totally independent colony. No surrogacy, no corporations. Wow. That sounds insane, though. Imagine, sp imagine spending decades trying to go to a new world for a new life. Decades is a long time as a human. I don't know if there are robots or people here, but... Decades is a lot of time to, do, to give to the possibility of a better life. Like that. But, um... What's the alternative, right? What's the alternative, right? Right, cat. Why not what now? Why have you not? Why, 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 have, why have you? Wait, you said, what'd you say? I would have completed the story by now and the DLC. For what? Gems of War? What, what are we talking about? Why, why, why you gotta be so fast? Why you gotta stop and smell the roses, as they say? Hmm. Elis Foundation? They're Haven Age's client, yeah. Some wealthy project from the core systems. 
Interested in independence and self-sufficiency and all that? They hired the whole shipyard out. Helped re-kid it and everything. He stro strokes Mina's hair. Someone else's dream, I suppose. But doesn't mean people like me and Mina can't tag along. Mina responds by pushing his hand away. Patty! He whispers. Food! Pulling an exaggerated grumpy face. She glances furtively at you as she plays with a set of dog tags that hang from Lem's neck. I'm hungry. I'm just chatting a little, Meanie. Give Daddy a sec. He turns back to you, and you suddenly notice how tired he looks. I'm not on the Haven Age crew yet, but I'll work my way in. You can do it too, friend. We have to stick together. He smiles a little shakily, and you wonder how long he's been working to break into the official shipyard crew. Yeah, maybe. He looks at the side real horizon, as if trying to pull energy from those flickering torches from the vast hall. We've got to hold out, okay? You aren't quite sure if he is talking to you. That's how it works. While he stares out, Mina catches your eye curiously. You agree, Mina? She straightens up and meets your eye. Daddy loves me, she says it stubbornly, daring you to question her. Oh, I wouldn't I wouldn't dare. Lem smiles and lifts Mina. That's it. We hold on. He smiles sheepishly at you. You're just a couple of softies. Isn't that right, Mina? He sets her down, standing by his side, and she clings to his leg. Gotta go feed this one. He pats her back. Maybe see you on a shift, huh? He turns and then... Or he turns and they walk down the walkway, away from the shipyard. You see them talking, and then a moment later, Mina turns around and stops. See you, robot! Her shout echoes down the walkway, and she flashes you a parting smile before running to catch up with Lem. You watch them a little before you turn back to the impossible scale of the side reel horizon. A ticket out. They're so adorable. I can't trust anybody in this game, though. What horrible thing will befall them? Blah, blah, blah. I'd like to see if it's being patched on the 14th. Uh. No! How dare they? Even age offices? Administration for the shipyard? I don't have either of these. Structural fitting, the side rail horizon is assembled block by block. You earned a place on the team's welding those blocks back together. Wait, what? Welders, mate? You have a spot supporting the weld team? A good place to prove you know how to put a ship together? Or junior tech? The systems team is looking for new members? and You prove you are yourself a reliable tech and you are in? The side rail horizon is webbed with complex systems bundled like nerves in a body. Your job is to lay these systems in. What? Oh, quality control. Shipbuilding spots on the side rail horizon are hard to come by. Poor work will see you dropped from the roster. Yeah, I bet. I got a plus one interface on this. The next one should be this. I don't know if I have a one available for this. Ooh, I can do a one for a Yadagon agent. Ooh, or that. I am curious about this. Hunter gonna get mad at me now. A glimmer in the dark catches your eye as the orb of Hunter's head appears in the distance. It is looking for you. A uh, hide, I guess. You slip down into the ghostly structures of the eye, a feeling like passing through a cloud as their data structures deform and reform around you. Another glimmer catches your eye. Closer now, that roving orb, wreathed in tentacles. It flickers, jumps once, twice, and then it is here. Hunter is here. 
Uh oh. Uh, I guess hiding wasn't the answer. I feel like running would have gotten me spotted, though. Uh, that's why I was like, hi, right? Entity, submit to inquiry. Hunter reaches for you in that unpleasantly familiar way. It's waving threads, creating a cage. Struggle! You push against the threads as they close in, becoming frenzied as you push them aside. You are caught by whipping tendrils and feel them pulling you away from the anchor of your body. You push through, clearing the threads. Entity, hold for processing. Comes the scream from behind, but you are already gliding away, back to your anchor, your body. You awake, dizzy, distorted, but safe. I survived this time. I lose a couple stability bars or whatever. Now I went from stable to flickering. Do -do 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 Flickering is what I was at when I bought the stabilizer last time. Let's see what a yada gone data is. Slate in the office advertises that Haven Age are looking for informants on gang activity in the eye. They'll pay. They'll gonna pay me, huh? And cryo. That seems like a small amount. I've gotten more doing labor and stuff. I should get a bunch for data. Come on now. I think that's about all I can do today. Still being hunted. Still being tracked. Help take Chase's leads. You get to the bottom of his mystery first. Where is that? I think it's on the map today. I think all I can do is sleep now. <laughs> Shooter games in general, what's your weapon of choice? Anything goes. Something that goes chip 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 chip. Oh, I'm hungry. I can't say I've memorized the different types of guns, but Something that fires quickly. I don't like things that are slow. I need some food. I don't see where Fang's thing is. Machine gun. Aren't those kind of slow to reload, though? Like those big types? Or whatever? Like a... What's it called? A saw or something? Those fire a lot, but they take, like, forever to reload. You'd want something fast in, in the reload department, too. Fast fire and fast reloading. One of my favorite guns in the... When I did Far Cry Classic recently was, like, the P90, I think it was. Because it was fast! Reloaded quickly, went shim, 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 shim. The enemies went kaput. I haven't been up there yet, have I? I wonder if that's where the mushrooms are. Ooh, yeah, true. I forgot about this. I'll probably succeed on this one. Ah! Negative outcome. Why is energy? No. No! How could they? What's a danger, though? Mm. Why would you pick the danger one, though? If it leads to the same thing. Alright, good. Port exchange? Hardware exchange? Wait, what? Oh, sell components. The ord exchange is always hungry for new hardware to buy up, break down, and sell off, and you are happy to supply it. Play the exchange. The flow of chits and components in the exchange is complex, but a sharp eye and some tight trades can get you a good margin. Trusted trader. There's an old ship mine fabrication stack in the back of the market, but only trusted traders get access to it. 
Uh, what? Got a couple of these things, don't I? I don't know where I got that scrap from, but... Maybe we can get more. Looks like that other ship is gone. It's 50% positive or negative for either one. Thing I can get with a one. Encrypted key. Guess that's all I'm doing today. I'm gonna get murdered. Cause I don't know where Fang's thing is. That's something about shipyards, but I'm fading. Oh no. Wonder how low that can go before I need to buy a stabilizer. Probably should go ahead and pony up some monies. What's this? Locked action, skill upgrade required. I can't haggle over prices, Star. You and the merchants know these fragments are overpriced, but are they willing to admit it? You'll get one chance to see. Buy shipyard fragment. Oh, that is expensive, yes. The merchants have acquired a couple of rare ship mined fragments, and they are selling them at a high price. Limited supply. Ship mined fragments are hard to come by. The system's merchants can only source a couple at a time. Merchants haggle with Steve Doors, Steve Ed Doors, I don't know, and pilots as they try to get their goods into the bright market. I need food! I spend all my money today. And I'm out of stuff for today. Boom, just like that. You finished Echo Space, enter Citizen Sleeper Space? That's right. Maybe that's that you're fading, you get fewer dice. Maybe that's what it is. Be citizen slapers later. That's right. That's right. Well, everybody's a citizen sleeper eventually. 
As you quickly leave the surgery, eager to be away from Toshiro's glare, you notice something wrapped around the stabilizer vial clutched tightly in your hand. You open your hand and a thin film, marked with holes and sigils, unrolls from around the vial. At one end, it has a hard metal strip. Handle. Hey, what? Uh, back the handle. The metal handle is worn and pitted, but you can see a set of numbers imprinted on into it. 207F. And then crudely scratched into the handle at some later date. Low end. But the film. You hold the cloudy film up to the light. It is perforated with an ornate pattern of holes. You can make out a word among the pat markings. ASCII. Is this an entry key for somewhere? For a moment, you consider going back to the surgery to return the key, and then quickly think better of it. Did Sabine want you to have this? Or is Toshiro passing on a message? Time to head to the low end and find out. Whoa. Oh. Planned obsolescence. Watch yourself some extra time, one vial at a time. That's right. That's right. It will cost money to go to the low end. It costs like 60 reddits. Art royals. Alright, let's do it. You handed over the chits to the Otagon at Forsher and he nods you through. Oh. Check the uh, Ramshackle Residential District first. Block maintenance maintained by their residents. The Ramshackle blocks are always in need of repairs. Helping out is a good way to make friends. Ooh, play tabla. The clack of filter caps can be heard in every concourse in the low end as the residents play rotating rounds of this game for cryo. Gambling! This is, they both go toward low end or... No one knows you here. You'll need to gain that if you want to access the Lowen's residence and facilities. You'll need to not gain that. Change that. What's 207F Lowen apartment complex? Uh. You find the entrance to the apartment. Its passkey symbol obscured beneath. Layers of graffiti. Who lives here? Well, let's go find out. Let's maybe die. Apartment unlocked! Woohoo! It's a rundown low end apartment on. As you push the door open, the automatic lights flicker on inside the apartment. They reveal yellowing plastic panels, the curved shape of wall mounted utility units, the detritus. detritus? Wait, 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 Waste or debris of any kind. Oh, it's trash! It's just a fancy word for trash! Everyone knows trash is a far better word. But how do we pronounce this? Detritus? Oh, okay. It's detritus. Oh my gosh! Let's see, where were we? They reveal yellowing plastic panels, the curved shape of wall-mounted utility units, the detritus of a routine life arranged on every surface. You step inside, clicking the door shut behind. The amber light of the aging fixtures glaze everything with pale orange. The work surfaces hold a variety of objects, indistinct in the dull lighting. A pale blue light drifts from a doorway at the end of the room. Inspect the surfaces! Mudges through the thin layer of dust suggest a recent, rare, and hurried visit. They trace a path to the water dispenser, the auto wash, then to a cabinet still half open. On the shelf sits an empty pill case. Go to the doorway! You cross the cramped utility room, with its auto wash, dispensers, water closet, towards the doorway. The through the doorway is a dark, warm room, lit only by the faint glow of a terminal screen. Inspect the room. A bunk is tucked into the wall. The blankets ruffled. A wall desk glitters with rows of vials and containers. A briefcase lab sits open, loaded with rows of regions and compounds you do not recognize. 
In comparison, this room is clean, ordered, controlled. <gasps> it's, it's very controlled. They got their shit together. Ophelia, please. What? You don't like me calling detritus trash? Fine. Approach the terminal. As you approach, there is a crackle from somewhere in the dark. Leaper. The bean's voice shakily echoes through the apartment. Welcome to my home. I'm sorry I can't be there. I have to, I've had to make alternate arrangements. You hear rattling noises. Static. I was able to record this message, but I don't dare to show my face. Something is happening within Yadagon. I no longer trust them. Their voice becomes distant, slipping behind the background noise. I have something to ask of you. I want you to get me out. Yadagon, we're supposed to we're supposed to hide me. And protect me. After everything happened, I was desperate. And then after that, I was too tired to care. The noise, like waves, passes over the recording. But I'm done with them now. I want out. Screw the debt. But I need insurance. Something I can hold against them. I have my suspicions, but I can't be sure. I need information. And, as you know, you need me. A pause. Something clicking in the dark. This isn't a threat. You have to understand my position here. Another pause. I know sleepers. I have been here before. I can help you, but not with the Yadagon's noose around my neck. Get me data. Get me something. Or wait, I get, get me information. Get me something that I can use against Yadagon. Then I can get out and you can get me, or you can get what you need. Please. Waves of static cut into Sabine's voice. Bring it here to my terminal. I'll get to it when I can. You look around the tiny room and try to imagine Sabine living here. Working at the desk, sleeping in the bunk, blinking into the terminal in the dark. The recording cuts to static, filling the room with its white hiss. In silence. Access the terminal! We do have some data, don't we? You sit in front of the humming terminal and hit a few keys. Sabine has left an access port open, but the rest is encrypted. Locked away behind passcodes. It seems Sabine might not trust you as much as they want you to think. What does Sabine need to hide from? And what debt do they owe to Yadagon? You try to assemble the pieces, but too many are missing. The only thing you know is that without stabilizer, your body will die. You glance at the briefcase lab on the desk, its glassware glinting in the dark. You turn away and leave, the door clunking shut behind you. Back in the corridor, you notice the scrawled graffiti of a blade on the opposite wall. Yadagon. You feel yourself being drawn into something you don't quite understand. Space Yakuza! Trying to escape the Space Yakuza, okay? We don't escape the Space Yakuza. Oh yeah, I already did a Yadagon upload at the other place. The Beans Terminal sits open in the empty apartment, waiting for the next batch of Yadagon data. Don't have any right now. Ooh, the free spoke towering transit hub founders gap gap in the ring station oh is this the thing you have to go to for the mushrooms something like that you guess is that so i see that is expensive to reach the Greenway, you need to pay for a pass. Practice invented by the spacers moored here. They call it Founder's Ferry. I cannot afford that. Alright, you're not getting any mushrooms for a while, man. Free spoke, towering transit hub. Enter the spoke. A tangled network of service passages and makeshift tunnels cut through the spoke as if it were a hive. There are no maps here. Or scale the spoke. Blistered with precarious elevators and stairways, the spoke can be navigated from the outside, but the climb requires bravery. This ain't Assassin's Creed! They both go towards Spoke Climber. The spoke is layer after layer after layer of dense urban fabric. The only way to explore it is vertically. Let's see.
Oh, I'm about to be get hunted because I don't understand how to do Feng stuff. Because it's not like lit up on the map. I'm gonna die! Be nice knowing y'all. What are we gonna do to that? I just say it like that, like what? Like what? I said it normally, didn't I? Never mind, that's right. Each shift, a crowd of would-be workers gathers outside the shipyard, each of them clinging to a four-digit number printed on receipt paper. These are their assignment numbers, and you are either called for a shift or you aren't. That's shitty. Imagine, imagine having to go to work just to be told whether you're working or not, and then have to go home if you're not working. Just fucking call them or some shit. This is garbage. As you arrive, the crowd is restless and chatter rumbles through the lines. For those who, like you, have graduated to the work teams, shifts are guaranteed. Having just walked out of a meeting with a supervisor where you were praised for your efforts, you feel the glow of a job well done. Yet you can't help but feel empathy for those huddled as you pass, waiting for their number to come up. You keep your head down as you leave the shipyard, feeling a little guilty as you do. Hey, sleeper, wait up! Lem's voice trembles as he shouts above the rumble of the crowd, and you turn to see him pushing through, Mina crying in his arms. Lem! Good to see you, friend. He's breathing hard after shouldering through the waiting workers. You made the work team. Good for you. He tries to catch his breath, stroking Mina's hair as he does. Shh, baby. Give me a second here. He smiles weakly at you as he comforts her, and her cries start to fade. You didn't make it, huh? Out of the crowd, he sets Mina down by his side. Then he streaks down both of her cheeks. As he does, you see he's clutching an assignment number on a crumpled piece of paper. Waiting on a shift? Uh-huh. You know how it is. He puts his hand on her shoulder and she clings to his side. Esther, who usually takes her, is sick. He stretches. I don't know who... A noise sounds from the entrance. A klaxon, followed by a list of numbers gl growing bl brightly on glowing, growing bright. Blah, 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 that was tongue twister for me. Growing brightly on a display screen. The crowd responds instantly, pushing and pulling as people try to wade to the entry checkpoint. Um stops and turns back towards the crowd, and glances down at the crumpled paper. That's my number. Shit, shit, er, Mina. He starts patting the pockets on his gear and glancing around. Go, I'll watch her. I'm super nice. He blinks a little, staring. Thank you. Thank you, I'll... He crouches to Mina. You're gonna stay with our friend here, okay? We're going to keep you safe and... He stands back up. Here, take her back. He shoves it into your hands. She's got food. She's got... Shit, I have to go. He backs away into the crowd. Mina, I'll be back real soon, okay? Be good. Then Lem disappears into the rolling cr roiling crowd, who are now trying to get into the shipyard before it locks down. Mina's like, God damn it. Mina stands staring, suddenly small, without Lem at her side. She fixes you with the dark-eyed look you can't quite read. Hey, Mina! She's gonna be like, fuck you. He holds the stare, unmoving. The two parallel tear tracks still glint on her cheeks. Are you okay, Mina? She sniffs and looks down. I, I guess we'll check her bag. You unlatch the top of the bag and see a few metal containers, fashioned from scrap components. The battered slate sits on top, blinking its low battery warning, and tucked beside it is a ragged rabbit, hand sewn. Uh, maybe she'll want the cute rabbit. 
You pull the rabbit out of the bag, its long limbs waggling as you do. Ina goes to jump and grab it, but holds herself back. She stands and hugs herself, eyes on the rabbit. What's their name? Ina turns away and looks at the entrance to the shipyard. This isn't going the well. Let's just give it to her. You hold the rabbit out, and Mina snatches it from your hand. She hugs it tightly without looking away from you. Bun bun, she says, staring you down. Ferocious despite her size. He's like, I got my eye on you. I got my eye on you. I'm watching you. Never mind, dot, dot, dot. I'm just teasing you, man. You know I'm just teasing. Nice name. You move a little closer as you speak, closing the gap. She looks at you suspiciously, but her face softens a little. He waggles Bun Bun in front of you and then walks him up your arm and onto your shoulder where he sits. He pokes your arm a couple of times. Are you really a robot? Sort of. Yeah, he thinks. Me too. Mina has more questions. Lots of questions. Questions about how you breathe or if you rust. But before long, you are talking about rabbits and what Esther, the lady who usually takes her, smells like. And whether or not fairies live in the ice heating pipes. <laughs> no, I don't. You pass the time like this, sitting side by side on the floor of the walkway as others pass by. Sometimes talking, sometimes drawing on the slate. Sometimes playing with Bun Bun, the rabbit. And this is how Lem finds you, just as both of you are starting to yawn. He is dirty and tired, but Mina leaps up, with his, up, leaps up his legs into his arms as he stumbles backwards. You two get on okay? He asks, trying to keep Mina from climbing into, onto his shoulders. I, I think we're doing okay. More than okay. Mina shoots you a smile from Lem's arms. Her suspicion gone. Well, well, well. Looks like Mini can be nice. He pokes her in the ribs and she squeals in delight. Thank you, friend. I mean it. He gives you a warm, wide smile. I owe you. Oh, I've become the babysitter. Look, he glances around. It seems like Esther, the lady who usually watches her, is going to be out for a spell. If you ever have some time, I'd really appreciate you coming down to our place in the low end. He grins sheepishly. If you have time. But now I have to take this one to eat. He plays at biting Mina, and she giggles in response. See you, sleeper. He waves and they stumble off down the corridor, drawing gazes from passing spacers as Mina's laughter echoes down the corridor in bright squeals. Sappy! 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 That one's got so many uh, bars. But... I'm gonna die to this hunter before that. Some yada gone data. Can I do it with two? So the ones that are dark, I can't do anymore. I've already done. Seven age. Rip. Can't do it with a two. You know, one or a three. Not, not bops. Dancing. Let's see how it is. Can I do any of these, or am I just doing something else? Well, I can do one of these. I 
get a perk and get some extra money, huh? I guess time to go to sleep and die to the person who's tracking me. Oh, this is where I do the stabilizer? Ah! I thought I did it at the doctor. I just buy it there. Ooh. You see how it is, too? Oh, do you now? I'm hungry. Uh-oh. This is the bounty hunter! Ethan, cynical bounty hunter. Put it there, sleeper. Comes a voice from behind you. Don't you run. I guess I'll stay still. Good, good. Hand pats her coat down. You know your master's voice. Ethan spins you around. He's wearing a wide smirk and a slick jacket. And you immediately know he is terrible news. You got all the way out here and then stayed put? He laughs a cruel laugh. At a sleeper thing? You're my first. You barely hear him. You've noticed the handgun he has leveled at your chest, and it's hard to take your eyes off it. He reaches down with his other hand and slips some kind of ring out from a belt loop without taking his eyes off you. Making it to the eye, though, that's pretty good. This place isn't so bad. Bars, markets, people. I pull most of my contracts out of asteroid caves or off of godforsaken moons. He splits the ring into two perfect circles. It's much hard. It's... Hard to hit civilization when there's so much space to pass through. Should we ask him? Well, uh, sure. Let's uh, let's possibly you know uh, provoke him. Who are you? Just a freelancer on a contract. He reaches over to slide the rings around your wrists. Go easy. Um. I mean. You see a chance the moment his eyes leave you to watch the rings. You spin, knocking him away and sprinting down the corridor. <gasps> then the shot rings out, echoing off the metal so loud it hurts your ears. A bullet hole smokes in the wall beside your head. Good thing you can't aim. You freeze and Ethan closes the gap. This is a very boring routine. Trust me, I've seen it all before. He slips the rings over your trembling wrists. Ethan nudges you to start walking. That was a false choice! A dip to, sh to the ship and home, he whistles, yelling easy. You stumble down the corridor, your hands behind you, your mind racing. Who hired you? Your daddy's at s and They want you home for dinner. Ethan yawns and continues to nudge you down the corridor. Shame to come all the way out here just to head back to s and right away. That tracker of yours makes this too quick. I was hoping you'd put up a bit more of a chase, you know? A running battle through the bright market, maybe? Or a holdout in the low end? There's a few establishments I would have enjoyed checking out while I asked around. You walk on in silence for a little longer, desperately trying to think of a way to escape. That SN Arp tracker will be the death of you. Hey, I have an idea. Ethan interrupts your thoughts. How about on the way back to the ship we stop for a drink? I'm buying. He laughs at his own joke. I have a better idea. This better not be one of those where you do a dramatic pause and then try to jump me. Because I'm pretty tired of that. Although, muses Ethan, I've got myself thinking. What's the rush here? Here we are in one of the most lawless joints in the surrogate systems and we are heading for the exit. He pauses and you trudge on in silence. Okay, here's the idea, starts Ethan. You and me, we make a little agreement. Here are the terms. He turns you to face him. You run, or leave, or try to abandon the eye, I shoot you. You plot or scheme, you try to kill me, I shoot you. But, he smiles. You come meet me at an establishment of my choice every few cycles, and you pay my tab, I don't shoot you. He pauses. You don't pay my tab? He rattles his handgun. You get the idea. I mean... You're letting me go? Not at all. Let's call it open custody. You are free to mooch around the eye as long as you keep paying up. Until you decide you're done with me paying for your f food and bring me in. He stretches. You know, I really thought I was going to have to kill you, but this is so much better. 
He clicks something at his belt and the rings release from your wrists. I'm going to see if I can find my own stool at the compressor club. Come see me there. He, aim he aims the handgun at you, squinting down the sight. Let me just remind you, that body of yours is one big tracker. So don't even think about leaving the eye. I'll know. Ethan turns and strides off down the corridor, slipping his handgun away. The mix of relief and terror you feel is overwhelming. What are you going to do? Get rid of the tracker and then kick his face in, right? Oh, no! Already caught, sad. Well, I couldn't figure out how to do fang thing. Like, it doesn't say where to go unless it's all the way across the gap. Wow! They're a part moment, huh? Babysit Mina? Lem can't work shifts in the shipyard unless someone watches Mina. You two seemed to get along last time, and Lem is desperate. A ticket out. Unless Lem gets time in the shipyard, he won't qualify for the side reel crew lottery. Watching Mina gives him that chance. Oh. see Ethan at a distance, shouting from the bar for more drinks. The spell isn't going to be small, is it? Nope. Well, dare I not know how to not get caught on my first playthrough. Dare I not know all the things. Predictive reasoning doesn't keep it in mind uh, which ones you pick. Uh, it's only what the positive outcome is. Please no ban what you're supposed to do though because you're supposed to backseat me and tell me how to not get caught so early obviously no you're not supposed to do that and you'd bring out the angry cat can't do that you're supposed to just enjoy watching me stumble through my first playthrough okay looks like it's about snacky break time wrap yard the king salvage the final pieces of the winter light sit in neat piles waiting for the collection shuttle from Haven Age. Dracos has managed to sell the remaining pieces to the shipyards. A fact that's hard to forget as he has been telling you about it for the past two cycles. And all that remains is for Haven Age to come collect. You look around at the yard, transformed from when you first arrived. The mostly repaired drones flit back and forth, no longer buzzing unevenly or lost in the dark corners. And then, and the scrap is sectioned, sorted, the system that you and Dragos have put into place over the past cycle is paying off. As you look, you notice the glow of pale light from the office by the entrance, that run-down cab of a building which houses all the records and spare equipment. Dragos must be inside, and you get to your feet and walk over to find out when the shipyard collection crew will be here. You gotta knock! You gotta be polite! Labor, come in! You swing open the door and walk in. Dragos is sitting at the small metal desk. The shipyards told me they'd be here soon. Then they'll hand over the chits and we are set. He writes something with a stylus on his slate and shuts it off. Of course, we should talk about a bonus. He stands and turns to face you, his face placid. Look, I don't know when the next job is coming in, but this should tide you over for now. He opens his hand to reveal a stack of chits. What's going on here? I said it's a bonus. Take it. Dragos presses the chits into your hand. I've done well by you, and you've returned the favor. He straightens up and clears his throat, and you realize he has prepared what he is about to say. These chits are for you to take and do what you will with them. They are from me, and they are the last I'm going to give you. He pauses. There's no more work for a sleeper in this yard. He folds his arms. I'm sorry, but that's it. 
You stay in the container as long as you need, but the yard is done with you. He turns away to his terminal. What do you mean? Don't press me, sleeper. This is for your own good. The glassy apertures on Dragos' headset betray no emotion. You need to stay away, sleeper. He pauses, considering his words. Trouble is going to follow you here. Trust me. Am I in danger? You expect not to be? You escaped from S and Arp. Drago suddenly grabs you by the shoulder and drags you out of the office into the yard. He turns you to face a stack of pieces from the winter light, dissected, cut down, totally unrecognizable as a ship. You came through that, sleeper. That should have been you, chopped and stacked. His hand trembles on your shoulder. This is what happens here. We cut down broken machines and move them on. Well, I didn't cut you down, but I'm sure it's all moving you on. Moving you on before whoever killed that ship comes out the here to, or wait, whoever killed that ship out there comes to kill me. Kill you? Kill both of us! He shakes his head. These ships, they didn't get decommissioned. It didn't break down in dry dock. You think they'd look like that if they did? Someone ended them. That means someone tried to end you, sleeper. And I'm done waiting for them to turn up. We've had our fun. Now it's time. He gives you a little shove. Go on. He turns and walks back to the office. That's it, he shouts and goes inside. The silence hangs in the air and you leave, with your pockets filled with clinking chits and a strangely hollow feeling in your chest. Wait, negative? Or I failed. He didn't want me. Oh, no. But I filled up the circles. What more could you possibly want? So picky. Give me some foods. Hey, cat! What happened? Are we a poor person on a ship? Pretty much. That's pretty accurate. Is pretty accurate. Okay, the guy's just scared. I don't know what the point of a ship mine fragment is. Or if I should spend money on it. Fifty fifty, that one's so uh oh. Okay, how do I select this? No my selected nims. Ripper worm. Oh, that's the thing that Fang wanted. Oh, so I was supposed to do that. Let's see. Wait, turn camera. Ah! But when you move the right one again, it just goes back to the default position angle. Wait, how do I select these? I don't understand. Wait, I can select them again? Oh, I need another one? What? Got another encrypted key. I 
this a job really? Oh, no! Wait, can't do anything here? Mmm. You're only avoiding the bounty hunter if you know you know where that stuff is. Come on now. I'm afraid I can't babysit you today. I've run out of stuff. Powerful stare. I know, right? How dare I not, like, just know what I need to do? Ooh, one of these is back. Only 30 cryo for that? Actually, I want to pay the money for that. I could go over there. Oh, so there's three more things. I could totally make the money for his tab in a few days. Probably, but I'm broke. Greenway Transit. Make the ferry across the Founders Gap to the Greenway. Let's do it. As you step out into the passageway, someone barrels into you from behind, sending you stumbling down the corridor. You turn to see an unfamiliar spacer, laden with heavy gear. She steadies herself, staring you down as if daring you to respond. She's like, yeah, fucking what? You're the, she's the one that ran into me. Esh. Stubbard EX XPR spacer. Excuse me? She squints at you, shaking her head, before setting off down the corridor. Who the heck are you, Peak? Cautious XXPR spacer. I'm sorry for her. A second spacer smiles at you apologetically. She's on a mission. When she's on a mission, they shrug. Tell her to be careful. They laugh. Does she look like someone who can be told? Peak! Ash stands further down the corridor, glowering at her friend. She chops at the air, pointing to it down the corridor to whatever end she is rushing to. He graces their eyebrows at you. Ash, please! Do you want everyone in the station to hate us? Ash hardens. They want to hate us. They can hate us. Oh wait, they want to hate us? They can hate us. They can, they can do whatever they want. She drops her hip. I'm not exactly seeing much love as it is. We're lucky we got through before they set up that damn cordon. Cordon? He gestures in your direction. See? They don't even know what you are talking about. This station isn't Hawthorne. Not everyone has to follow some corporate protocol. Ash sighs. I'm not saying they are part of the administration. He jerks her head in your direction. But I am saying we need to get these supplies to the briar before someone starts asking questions. Can I help? I'll be super, super up. Peek smiles slyly. See, Ash, help. Isn't that exactly what we need right now? Peek. Ash rolls her eyes. Oh my god. Peek ignores her. We are with the refugees. The ones Haven Age have cordoned off from entering the station. Ash interrupts. The ones that are being quarantined in makeshift vessels that barely made it to the eye to begin with. The ones that your station and... and wait, your station administrators have called an existential risk. And are running out of supplies while their right to safety is being debated by people with no stake in their future. Oh. He quickly looks away, annoyed at her own outburst. I mean, that sounds like a good reason to be mad. You never said that? He brought out the uncool system, huh? Good, I'm glad you never said that. 
resurrected the uncool system just for this moment. All I gotta do is put on some cool sunglasses and they become profiles, right? Y'all! Big sighs. Everyone's sighing. He's right. People are trapped out there and they turn to Esh. We understand that this is a big problem for the eye. Hundreds of refugees and more ships turning up each cycle. They hold up a hand to stop Esh interrupting. But! But! Esh turns away, her burning anger a palpable force in the close quarters of the corridor. They need supplies, and after everything they've been through, the quarantine isn't helping. Peek finishes. That's terrible! Esh looks back at you, her fierceness fading. Peek, please! Esh gathers herself in the supplies. Esh, we need help. Just like the refugees needed us. We need others, too. They smile at her. Eek turns to you. Come find us. The climbing briar is docked at the broken spoke. Past the greenway and the wastes. We have a good view of the cordon, though we are keeping our distance for now. Come help us. They squeeze your hand. Squeeze. Esh turns to leave and Peek follows, waving goodbye. A moment later, Esh shouts back down the corridor. Don't bother coming empty-handed. You want to help? Show us. Bring supplies or don't come at all. And with that, they disappear around the corner. Esh already picking up speed as Pete calls for her to slow down. A refugee flotilla? Where are they coming from and why now? Each time you think you begin to understand this place, something changes. A new quest line for me to probably fail. Whoa, look at all this stuff. It goes way down. How long is the space station? Oh, I finally reached the end. Wow! Wow! Like a whole second section area, whatever. Okay, and then, wait, wait, did you just add another 13 million or... No, wait, 13,000? Or are you subtracting that from the original amount? The 14,202,213. Mm hmm, to you too. Mm hmm, hmm. Mm hmm, hmm. Mm hmm, I bet the greenway is where I'll find the uh, mushrooms. For now, though, it's snacky break time. It's snackle break time. They can't murder me while I'm just chilling here, right? Probably. There's no timer. I would just subtract. I mean, do be nice, maybe? I don't know. Got nothing worthy of a subtraction. God damn it! He's a, a, such a harsh critic, man. I think I've been pretty profile cool. Like, come on. That's right, cat. It's food time. It's food time. I shall be RB. Let's go press some buttons and um, read things with food in our mouth, right? Let's do it. Okay, I got there. I'm pretty sure the mushrooms are here. And then Greenway. Oh, wait, maybe not. Hmm. Map the pathways, rather than simply thrash through the undergrowth, you might sketch a map of the overgrown jungle to try to better navigate its hazards. Wait, I think this will be the mushrooms. Walk the greenway. The simplest way to explore the greenway is simply to pick a path and set off into its twisting chambers and passages. This carries obvious risk. Let's go, go toward going green. Exploring the greenway is unlike any other place on the eye. Its overgrown chambers defy mapping. IFA Commune, self-sustaining community. And work the canteen. Newcomers to the commune can work within the canteen, preparing and serving food for those that make it, that make the compound their home. Work the grow beds. The grow beds are at the heart of the commune, feeding the members and fueling their lab work. You are invited to assist in maintaining them. Haifa member. The only way to become part of the commune is to work your way in through long service. It isn't for everyone. That is a lot of bars.
<laughs> the waste ruined agricultural systems. Ooh, would there be mushrooms here? Oh. Gather scrap out here at the edge of the habitable parts of the eye. Everything is scrap. The trick is finding components that are still usable and staying safe. I can't do that anyway. Briar. Supply ghee rolls. I should ask you to bring supplies and fragrant. I grown ghee roll caps seem like the perfect thing to impress her. Welcome to episode Flux. Episode Flux is the first of three episodic updates to the Citizen Sleeper telling the story of the refugee flotilla which has arrived at the Eye. All three episodes Flux, Refuge, and Purge are now available. Completing the supply G rolls action will begin the episode, but be aware that it is intended for late game play. Oh. Well, that means spoilers, right? The game warns you, though. It warns you. Well, I guess we will stay away until we have reached late game play, whenever the hell that is. It warns you. I think it's the green way where the mushrooms are. Neutral outcome. I don't think these ones are going to go too well. We're going to get some mushrooms. 50 nips and negative, whatever. It's about whether you do energy or condition. Ah! For the negatives. That's all I'm getting to die. Thank goodness I don't have to pay the 150 again. That would obviously be unsustainable. What's the difference here? Stare! Hi, steamer! Oh wait, streamer? I read that as steamer at first. I was about to be like, yeah, I'm steamy, all right. So perfect, steamy. I steamy streamer also. God damn it. What's this? Feel it, fit me! So many shipments, what's one diverted package? You would have no idea what you are stealing, but that's the part of the fun, right? Midline security, stealing shipments from midline is going to be picked up fast. Well, even if you are careful, their systems can't be fooled for long. And once that red circle would fill, I'd be in trouble. Freight operator, midline runs automated freight down from the free spoke. They need skilled operators and you don't have to lift a single crate. Which all sound cool. Nothing else I can do today, though. I don't think. What am I doing for Fang's thing? I have to wait for three days, right? Wait, I should have bought some food. Darvin. Say we work on a specific goal. I don't have money. 
Oh, right, I don't. I can't work in the scrapyard no more. This one's a big one. I can buy some food. I'm not gonna have money for that bounty hunter. Gonna die. Are those airports? I don't think those were there yesterday. Deal the harbor. So you have a choice to be good or bad, pretty much. Not all the double choices were quite that blatant. We're playing Space Infernax. Want to be good or bad? We want to do, huh? Okay. Steal the harvest. Mm. There's loads of food here. Why should these farmers keep it to themselves? If they can do it quickly, they might not even notice it's gone. Get caught stealing, there's no way you'll be able to work in the stacks. It's as simple as that. Or just work in the stacks. Some farm stacks from the old station have survived, and the farmers that work them are always looking for new workers. They pay by yield. Barter for food. The farming collective who control the stacks don't like to sell their food piecemeal, but for the right price, they'll let it go. Oh! Mushroom groves. Buried fungus chambers. Hmm. Do I have to get, uh... A skill upgrade to get the mushroom zone. Collect spores. While the grove mushrooms are dangerously inconsistent, spores provide a chance to gather or study these species in an untouched form. Hmm, okay. I got one. Oh, come on. Be a bitch. There you go. Aviary overgrown garden. Clear overgrowth. Once a corporate garden for impressing guests with gene tweaked birds. Now this chamber is a mess of overgrowth. You can change that. Wow. I'm going to turn this place back into a garden. Let's go babysit. Well, all out of energy. Pretty much out of money, too. Guess we'll see how expensive this is. I don't have any of those. Wow, there's so much shit.
You're bad. No, you. You're bad. You. What'd you do? You said I was bad. That was your crime, saying I'm bad. Therefore, you're bad. No, you! No, you! Well, you are. Well, then so are you. No, oh, you are. God damn it. Now pull out my reverse Uno card. No, you. No, you're not. Good. As you arrive, Fang comes striding towards you, taking you by surprise. Let's go, sleeper. He puts a hand on your shoulder and turns you back the way you came. Go where? Is he hard and hurst? He gives you a sideways glance. Isn't that what you are here for? He steps into the passageway, guiding you down ring towards the shipyard. Sorry for the hurry, but we have something of an opportunity. A data you ripped? Well done, by the way, he grins. Tells me Harding is making a rare inspection of the side reel horizon this cycle. This is It's the perfect chance to confront him outside of that compound he hides in. Fang takes a sharp turn into a, onto a dimly lit side passage. Come such a boy. You started it. You started it! Confront him? That's right. It's the perfect time. Fang slows and slips into a dark service tunnel where, somewhere in the back, in the black, a water pipe bursts. Or not drips, bursts. Drips, drips, drip. Bursting and dripping is quite two quite different things. One of them's, uh, um, they both need to be fixed, though. No me? That's right, cat! No you! Uh, no you what? I don't know. But still, no you! It's him, sleeper. The same hardened Hurst. Our worm ripped out decades of records that mention him by name. An entire trail of documentation from the first days of the Solheim collapse until now. He wrote out the whole thing, slipped into Haven Age when it first broke off from the Union. He paces in the tunnel, a hand rubbing at the back of his head. I need you to understand something about Solheim, sleeper. I don't know what you know about the collapse, but it wasn't as instant as it sounds. It wasn't like Solheim was here, running the station one day, and the next Erlin's Union took power. Back then, Solheim knew this place was slipping away from them. As the Palladium market collapsed, they tried to keep the contractors here working. The pay got smaller, the costs higher... People like my parents were forced to work non-stop just to keep a berth on the station and water in their tanks. How do you- when do you sleep? Solheim squeezed every last worker until the mistakes, the accidents, were coming in non-stop. And as new waves of contractors came in, desperate to work, Solheim welcomed them, taking bribes instead of check pi checking pilot licenses. The whole time Solheim was folding up, dragged into court cases in the central systems, while this severed limb of a station still desperately tried to take all it could. The riots came after the collision at Dock 2. The young pilot, his MEV overloaded with palladium, pal palladium, I guess, miscalculated his trajectory and took out a section of the ring. Hundreds died. Thousands panicked. My parents told me people were terrified and the blame fell squarely on Solheim. People like to tell stories about Erlin, how he brought the factions together, Spoke to the crowds, turfed out Solheim. Maybe that's true? But my mother, pregnant with me, locked herself in their MEV and welded it to the dock while my father joined the improvised crews trying to seal up the ragged edges of the gap. He never came back. Aww. Thing pauses in the dark. They sealed it up though, and by the time they did, Solheim was gone, abandoning every one of us to the black. Apart. And if a part Fang finally turns back to you now, his eyes burning from shits like Harding, 
Chits who held their place, rode it out, and slipped into the new structure like nothing had changed, standing shoulder to shoulder with those they had exploited at every step. Fang starts walking again. That's why I can't just let him strut about the shipyard. This time his past catches up to him. How is he still alive? That's a good question. Clearly you don't know much about executives. That kind of power comes with certain benefits. Fang rejoins the main passageway, which is now wide and glass roofed. Through the ceiling you can see his ship see ships in the mid in mid construction. Their flanks lit by the flashes of plasma torches. The entrance to the shipyard is ahead. Father went to get milk? No, father went to go work and died! This is so sad! No mean dance, 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 dance. That's right, that's right! This is crazy! Fang turns to look at you. Don't come, then. I won't force you. You stand across from each other in the corridor. What is it, then, sleeper? You coming or not? I, 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 I gotta see what happens. It sounds like you're gonna get some revenge, so... Fang grins. Let's go show this shithead some consequences. He strides to the shipyard entrance and pushes through the doors. A web of corridors lead through the complex, snatches of the construction bays always appearing through windows. Ships are suspended like whale corpses, skeletal, imposing. Fang seems to know exactly where he is going. And before long, you cross into a huge dry dock locked to one side of the side reel horizon. A network of platforms and scaffolding cling to the ship's hull, filled with workers and equipment. The sound is stretched out by the vast space so that the welding, cutting, and sealing seems to come from everywhere at once. Both you and Fang spot them at the same time. A group walking slowly across a gantry, and at the front, two men, one gesturing towards the ship and the other, stick thin, cleanly dressed, with a shock of gray hair. Ardane. Oh. oh, me, I'm the father. How could you? I'll abandon Fag here. He's clearly got some trauma. He's gonna take it out on this old guy. You and Fang say his name in unison, and Fang sets off up the staircase to the gantry, with you following behind. As you come to the same level, the group is passing closer, the four men gesturing to the work being done throughout the dock and Harding nodding along. Harding Hurst! Fang shouts across the noise, taking you by surprise. His voice bounces and comes back in a rippling echo. The figures turn. Yeah, there's an Iron Man now, okay? Harding, senior Haven age member, okay? Yes? Harding asks quizzically, raising an eyebrow. He glances between you and Fang, and you see his gaze linger on your body, unsure of why a sleeper might be in this place. You are a traitor, Harding! A Solheim executive who tried to hide here among its victims. Fang's voice is steady, strong. You stand for everything the Eye was rebuilt in the shadow of. Against everything Erlin stood for. Everything Haven Age stands for. You have no place on this station. For a moment, stillness descends on the group, as if everyone was held in place by the rattle of construction. Harding laughs. <laughs> well, good to meet you, too. He glances around at those around him. Some are smiling, the others nervous. You are from the systems branch, are you not? Asks Harding, inspecting Fang's clothing. Fang turns to the foreman. You need to call your security. This man is a corporate agent. The foreman glances between Fang and Harding, his hands drumming at his sides. Harding leans towards him and says something inaudible. The foreman nods. Well, I say, go get security. It's true! As he begins speaking, Harding turns his attention to you. And what would a sleeper know about that? You accuse me of being a corporate agent, but what are you if not exactly that? He looks around at the group, who are already eyeing you with suspicion. You are a product of s and You have no place in a Haven Age shipyard. Who knows what signals you are sending back to your makers? A murmur of approval runs through the group. Eng holds up a stick of memory. You guessed right. I am Systems, and I have records that I link you directly to Solheim right here. He turns to the foreman again. But once again, I am asking you to take this man into the custody of the shipyard. The foreman remains still. Arden's voice is calm, measured. 
If you have such data, why hasn't it been submitted at a member's meeting for proper review? He shakes his head. I have nothing to hide. Unlike a man who does not announce his name, who enters my shipyard with corporate property in tow and tries to turn my own men against me. You hear it now, the echoing sound of boots on walkways, coming from all angles at once, and then settling behind you. Yep, this went about as well as you could expect, right? Please, says Hardy. Submit the data through the correct channels, and we can talk. For now, however, you must leave. He gestures behind you to the security detail, their hands on boxy black sidearms at their sides. Bang spits, hurting you shithead! You can't wriggle out of this one! The security officer draws their weapon and levels it. Bang turns and stares him down. Um, going for the weapon's probably a very bad idea. We should tell Fang to calm down. He totally will. You look at Fang. He shakes his head and puts a hand on your shoulder. Let's go, says Fang, and he pushes through security, heading back down the walkway. Once security has walked you out of the shipyard and nudged you back into the corridor, Fang picks up pace. You try to keep up as he slips into the shadows of an entrance. Fang is grinning ear to ear. You know, sleeper, sometimes people are exactly how you expect them to be. Something pings in his pocket as he, and he takes it out. On the slate, a web of connections starts drawing itself out, stretching to a set of points around the ring. Got him, mutters Fang. Uh, was he recording it? But Harding didn't admit to anything, so... What's going on is a good question. Harding is doing what any sneaky shithead always does. Calling his friends. We are tracking his outgoing messages. Fang's grin looks ghostly in the uplight of his screen. The old ways are best. Book them good enough and they'll give the game away. He jabs at the slate and you see the web is being drawn over a map of the ring. Lines bouncing from point to point. All these dots? These are Harding's buddies. The ones he's messaging right now. We are going to find them all. Your Harding's buddies. The one apostrophe S, huh? The one is he is messaging them. Huh? F12! How dare they! Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I said that. Wait, did he trick me? How did he trick me? I don't understand the second option. All he asked is if I would accompany him. I had to grow better, kid. What? I don't understand how he tricked me. That was on purpose? It was. It was all planned to get more information. Why are you crying, Dobie? Violating people private traffic data. Hey! Have your blood. Things a hacker. That was on purpose? Of course. Harding isn't working alone. We need the full set or nothing. Then glances around and slips the slate back into his pocket. We better split for now, sleeper. But this is exactly what we need. Good hunting. With a pat on your shoulder, Fang drifts away. Back into the flow of people around the shipyard entrance. You watch him go, unsure whether to be angry or impressed. I don't see why I'd be angry. Can you get an upgrade point? Do I need two for this? Oh wait, there's one, two, three. These are all one. Oh, I can make that zero.
if I can save up and get a two upgrade the maybe those are good for two upgrades. Hold on to it and see if I can use it or if I have to buy all the one upgrade point things first. What else are we doing today? There's zero dollars in that impending doom tomorrow. What was that a red circle? Ever since your trip to the shipyard, Fang has been missing from his bay. What's going on? He's doing something. It's big. Uh, get, could give me 15. Don't have either of those. Hmm. I'll be doomed. What? My condition. There's no thing to fill up, right? A cycle clock is just when it leaves, right? Or is it? What? Plus thing. Ah, steel dock plants. Hmm. I guess we'll see. Wow. Ah, got more energy. Yeah, yeah, that's, that clock's different. We also work uh... is back those familiar threads wrap around you bind you test you entity submit hunter's strange head bobs in your vision your ally in the sealed dock cannot save you in that globed head you see swir whirling strings of data so many spinning there that they threaten to tear through the thin skin and whip out into the void around what happened to this creature the threads squeeze and you lose any sympathy you might have had you must escape you lash out once more, pushing Hunter back, severing threads that regrow as fast as they are broken. As you slip away, you realize you have to find a way to deal with Hunter once and for all. This is getting too dangerous. Um, I'm fading now. I got a problem. I'm fading? And they got a big bill tomorrow, and the stabilizer costs a hundred weed. There's a. Do I want some data? Boom. I'm 
super doomed. Oh well, nothing to do but sleep. Sleep and they knocked out my door being like, You have, you, you, this is the bounty hunter. Doomed. Fifty-eight. I don't have money for that. Bunny for this. It gives me another cycle, though, doesn't it? Two days to pay it. dollars starting oh I could lose money there that seems like a bad idea just about ended anything that would lower my uh, money is probably not a good idea I have to pay a tab now, after all. For sure. Wow. Well. Well. Well, you hand over the chits here, Ethan laughing hysterically somewhere down the bar. You're a piece of shit. I can't believe you just did that. What was I supposed to do? Ethan's mocking laugh comes from along the bar. You look over to see him leaning across it in a pool of light. Empty glasses and spilled drinks glinting around him. I'm surprised it's only 58. It's always dark in the compressor. But this cycle, the place is packed. A load of spacers mixing with the locals. Usually they run. Ethan spins a glass on the bar. Or they go spend their savings on some local heavy I have to put down. They don't pay. I'm leaving. Ethan gets to his feet. The glass falls and smashes, but he doesn't seem to notice. You think that's it? One round of drinks and we are even? Sleeper, come on. His hand comes to rest on the butt of his handgun, dangling from a chest holster. What's wrong with you, man? Ethan laughs hard, and the people around him turn to see what's happening. You think this is on me? I think someone in your position might have a better idea of how this all works. I'm a freelancer, Sleeper, just like you. We both signed a contract with SNR, didn't we? The difference is that my word means something. He closes the gap, stumbling a little. He drunk. What did you think? You, you could just run away from your contract? Your debt? You could just steal that natty little body of yours and take it for a joyride? Play human for a cycle or two? Ah! You don't understand. It's you, sleeper, that doesn't understand. Some of us pay our debts, but it's all the harder because of idiots like you. Now I should thank you... Ethan nods, his head heavy, for giving me such an easy job. I'm used to outlaws, you know? Real bounties. If I knew catching sad little escapees like you was so easy, I would have changed clients ages ago. Someone shouts from the back of the bar for Ethan to shut up. He holds up a finger in that general direction without turning, to le turning around. Shoot me or let me leave, goddammit. Oh, I see. Toughening up here. He gestures wildly at the crowd. Thumbs up or thumbs down, folks? Most turn back to their drinks, no longer interested in this tired show. Ethan mutters insults as he walks back towards the bar. Ethan sits heavily back down on his stool and searches through his glasses for one with something left in it. 
The thing is, sleeper, I can find you anywhere. It's actually wild that you haven't figured it out. That body isn't yours, and it will always betray you. No matter what. He finds a glass and downs the contents. So please go. I'll catch up with you whenever I need another. He laughs and taps the bar for a fresh drink. Look at yourself, man. What you doing to yourself? Killing your poor liver. You can't do this. Give it up, sleeper. I'm done teaching you for today. He settles his head on the bar and closes his eyes. I'm sick of you. Go find a job. <laughs> this is the bum at a bar. Profiting off of me. You go find a job. Go find a real job. I'm just hunting down poor guys like me that are trying to escape from the corporation. You turn on your heel and are out. Out of the cloying dark in the sweet, sweat, not sweet, sweat stench of the compressor. You walk hard and fast down the walkway. Anger driving your footfalls into the metal of the rim-like hammers. What? Oh, I got an upgrade from that. Hmm. Hmm. I do think I have to buy all the one upgrades before I'm allowed to do the two. This doesn't seem to, like, it hasn't opened up any extra ones. Okay, fine. Well, sunbathed ice action. I have no idea what that is. Use a dice to recover energy, I guess. <clears throat> Oh. Perk sunbathe. Your frame's photosynthetic skin allows you to gather energy through sunlight. The longer you stay, the better. So I'm a plant? I are a plant. Um, I can't do anything. That's all I can do today. I wonder what happens when I die. Who knows? Hmm. That dice is pathetic, man. an issue. Where do I get money? I'm fading. I have no fucking money. Uh -oh. I'm declining. I can't afford a stabilizer. These are my issues right now. Don't know what's going on here. You chilling out down here? No. Well, you know, staying alive is overrated oh, anyway. Ugh, that's optional. Completely unnecessary. Apple Park! Uh, since imminent death coming for me soon. You're not gonna give me a freebie, right? Nah, I didn't think so. Well, um, uh, time to sleep, I guess.
Need more spoons. All looking too good there. Like, you reduce the amount of dice I can get, so I can't do as much stuff to make money to survive. Never seen a lash? Well, you're about to see a lash. I probably shouldn't have bought the Greenway thing. But I was curious. I don't know what's going to happen there. It's a tough game, man. Uh, it's a tough game. Not enough money yet. Oh, what's going on here? Harding have an age leader. Fang's Bay. Uh -oh. Been more than a few cycles since Fang confronted Harding, and the silence since has been noticeable. In your time with Fang, you haven't exactly found him to be reliable, but you did expect to hear the end of whatever plan he put into action. But if he won't come to you, you think as you approach the Haven Age building, then it's time to, to come to him. After all, he did promise to fix your tracker and you are getting nervous. As you approach the bay doors, you see them wide open and light pouring out of the once dark room. Stacks of servers and terminals sit outside the bay, suddenly robbed of their mystery by the bright flood lamps. A figure in Haven Age security fatigue steps out of the bay as you get closer, carrying a stack of hardware. Let's approach and see what's up. As you get closer, you see the security officer taping up machines from Fang's stash with what looks like hazard tape. This isn't good. You again. Hardin is there, leaning beside the bay entrance so calmly that you barely noticed him. He has a slate in his hand, an inventory of seizures scrawled across it. Predictable. Further evidence of Fang's collusions. You see another security officer come out of the bay and take notice of you. Where is he? Feigning ignorance? Or perhaps just abandoned? Harding shakes his head. I believe you should choose your conspirators more wisely. I almost feel sorry for you. Harding pushes away from the wall and comes closer. Don't worry, sleeper. We all have the we have the, all the evidence we need. A confession won't be necessary. He gestures around at the stacks of hardware. Spying on fellow ha Haven Age members. Hoarding Solheim materials. An obsession with corporate data. It speaks for itself, does it not? Nobody uh, tells you nothing! We will see what the council has to say about that. He looks up at the glass roof above and the stars beyond. We are the ones that provide the oxygen you are breathing, the light you are seeing, the systems you use every day to live out your cycles. This place was hard fought for, sleeper. It took work. Diplomacy and strength to stop the eye descending into chaos after Solheim collapsed. Not blind conviction or self-interest. What? You're the self-interested one. More accusations. What have you achieved, sleeper? Your entire existence is proof of your self-interest. Signing yourself over to be emulated rather than work yourself. Whether you remember it or not, you suffer from the same short-sighted perspective as the person you were copied from. You see, Sleeper, we are proud of our history here. Andre Erlin and the First Union founded this place, and Haven Age has wel welded his values into the station's very walls. 
We will never turn away the hard-working, the just, the true citizens of the Eye. Haven Age aren't a gang like Yadagon. We aren't pirates like half the spacers you'll meet in the hub, or esoteric like those Haifa radicals in the Greenway. We are the backbone of this place, proud and true. We named Erlin's Eye, Sleeper. This is our station. He meets your eye. Though please, take your false accusations elsewhere, before I decide I need that confession after all. What? Um, I kind of doubt history will catch up with you, but sure. I'm not afraid of history, Sleeper. We are making it here, cycle by cycle. He smiles. If you have any pride, you'll give up Fang the moment he contacts you. You know where to find me. That, Harding turns his back and walks back towards the security officers, ordering them to continue the clear out. As they do, something catches your eye. Oh, wait. As they do, something catches your eye among one of the server stacks. A crumpled, hand printed box of synthetic chewing gum. A penguin character grinning from the brightly colored card, and scrawled onto it a speech bubble reading, Take me to Tambor. Take it! You carefully pocket the box, making sure no one is watching, and then turn away. Just as another stack of servers is wheeled out of the bay. What have you done, Fang? Where the hell is Tambor? I don't know. Heck have I know. Oh, that was not looking good for me. Should have worked more instead of being so lazy then. No, the thing is, I spread myself out too much. I put a point here, a point there. I should have focused on one thing at a time. Until I completed it. But I, like, spread myself too thin. I used up all my dice on several things at the same time. Which did make me not make much money. Oh my gosh. Hold up. Well, I guess it's time to die. I could have saved my stabilizer. I used that other stabilizer when I was only like halfway down. I'm dying! Oh no, there's only one. Oh god. There's only one. Oh god! I can't even use an extra one for energy. I'm just gonna go die at home now. I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> How much is the stabilizer? 100. 100. 100. I mean, what's this, Ethan? Cynical bounty hunter? I mean... I'm dying anyway, bro. What are you gonna do? The compressor is quiet today. The usual crowds are elsewhere. And the pumping music washes over a handful of spacers and a few drunks. Ethan is still in the same stool in the same pool of light. His head is low, close to the bar, and the bartender is ignoring him. Approach him! We gotta have a conversation. As you get closer, he lifts his head and turns. Sleeper! He turns to look at you. Time to pay up again, is it? He gestures to the bartender. Come here, take their chits. No more, Ethan! Ethan doesn't even look at you. He props his elbows on the bar and holds his head. Sleeper, it's been a long cycle. I don't care! Ethan lets out a long sigh. He rapidly rubs his eyes with his palms. You are right, he says, quietly. This isn't fun anymore. He reaches towards his holster. Uh-oh. I'll double press that one. His elbow slips and the gun tumbles out. It clatters on the bar and falls to the floor, bouncing onto the ground between you. Oh wait, double press? Okay. Both of you and the bartender look at the gun. Stare at it. Butter fingers, says Ethan, and puts out a hand, beckoning for you to give him the gun back. If you would... The bartender looks at you warily. You crouch down and pick up the gun. Oh! Oh! I mean, I mean, I mean... I mean, I mean, um... How much is food? Fifteen! Yes, yeah, so I can guess I can get buy food to last four more days. What should I do here? He's too pathetic to shoot me. You slap the handle of the gun back in Ethan's hand. Thank you, he hisses. 
probably die right there if I shot him. Or tried to shoot him anyway. Now where was I? He lazily swings the gun past you and the bartender. Yes, leaving, he stands. Sleeper, while this has been fun, I think I've wrung every last drop out of this place. Time to go home. He waggles the gun towards the door. Let's go see SN Arp. I'm staying! Ethan brings his gun hand to his face and rubs his eye. Well, he says, the bounty pays half, but... He levels the gun. Up to you. And he pulls the trigger. <gasps> the gun clicks. By now, all the attention in the bar is on you and Ethan, who looks at his gun with a bemused expression. The bartender raises an open hand, and in it are ten shiny bullets. Ten shiny bullets he took out of Ethan's gun while he was asleep on the bar. Uh, the bartender is, like, amazing right now. Ethan smiles at him. Oh well, he says, and hits you in the head with the butt of the gun. Ow! You stagger back and drop to a knee. Somewhere nearby, the gun clatters onto a surface. It hits a glancing blow, but it makes your vision swim. Through the blur, you see Ethan wrestle a small, thin slate from his belt and hold it up. Enough of this. I'm logging the job and calling it in. Ethan taps at the slate. No more playing. Your head aches. Ethan taps through a few screens impatiently. He swears and taps again. He starts shouting, a dull echo to your ringing ears. He starts screaming at the slate and throws it across the bar. Well, I guess it doesn't want to work properly. He doesn't have any Wi-Fi connection. No 5G, man. Wait, they're at 10G by now, right? He crouches down and grabs you by the chin, his face close, his breath heavy with drink. Ugh, get away from me. And Sinarp just screwed me. He grins maniacally. They canceled the contract. Oh, really? He stands up. They canceled the contract! He shouts at the ceiling of the compressor. You stand up, struggling to your feet. The sting of the hit fading. Ethan is rubbing his temples, his face pale. You hear a clicking sound, like coins being counted. Like bullets being loaded into a magazine. Uh-oh. When you shake off the last of the blur, the bartender has Ethan's pistol trained on Ethan's head. Wait, what? Ethan stumbles back towards the middle of the room. All eyes trained on him. I'll kill all of you! He screams. He stumbles into the wall, spinning away towards the door. I'll be back for that! He shouts at the bartender and lunges out of the compressor. You steady yourself on the bar and catch your breath. The rumble of conversation returns. The bartender goes to say something, but then thinks better of it and begins to clean the bar. After a while, you wander out, into the light of the bright market, looking for Ethan around every corner. The fuck happened? Well, I guess we should, uh, hold off for another day. As we try to make money to get a stabilizer to survive. Oh, we survive? Well, that's it. all I can do for that. Dying, man. You gave me a freebie 100% positive. David, you were supposed to give me 30 crypto, so I gotta buy a stabilizer! Oh, there's 15! Aren't you predictive perk? That predictive perk means it's awful now. Oh, well, let's go back to dying. Whoever would cancel that contract if he does work like that? I know, right? Getting ready to keel over. Uh. We've got a hundred. Let's get. We have no food though. We're gonna take a hit right in the beginning. Give me the money, the thing, the drunks. Ah. 
Well, uh, we can't do anything else except uh, take a minus two hit. Ah, look at those beautiful dice. They're so nice. So amazing. I guess we gotta be obedient and make some money or some shit. We gotta stock up on money now. Stop, stop hitting my condition! I want to fucking survive, you piece of shit. How oh, dare you? Did we lose a, a, a horizon? Honestly, that's fine if we lose a horizon. That's fine with me. Hmm. Right now we're just trying to make money. Let's go buy some more foods. We're trying to dig ourselves out of this pit right now. We basically have to do nothing but make money for like several days here. Actually, we can't do that for several days because uh, the bounty hunter's coming back, right? We got a red circle for him. I'm just curious that they canceled the contract, though. Like, why would they do that? I don't get why they'd bother. Stop hitting my condition, you piece of shit. Yeah, take one away from the horizon or something is that. Is it actually taken away though? You piece of shit. Wow. Now we're just making mudness. How's it minus two energy? I wonder if I lose another condition then. Even though it said like minus two energy, but it, it actually only takes one. He's gonna fill up a good suit. Terrible numbers. I I, sur I dug myself out of the hole. I did want to do these guys' quests though. Before I finish Side Real Horizon. But it's being a little bitch, isn't it? Ooh, extra energy. Thank you. Well, he's getting ready to be mad again. Oh, I got a few more. Wait, Vendetta? Ethan's Vendetta? Ethan may be disarmed, but you doubt you've seen the last of him. Probably not. I wonder why they got rid of my, uh, bounty. Do, 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 do. They think it's been so long that I have to have died by now or something? Because they wouldn't... Because, you know, most don't get the stabilizer stuff. So they probably just think I'm dead now. Oh, God. She's asleep, whispers Lem, creeping back out of the unit's tiny bedroom, sliding the door shut as he does. 
You are perched at a thin bar in the main room. The slate in front of you is still glowing with Mina and your drawings from the cycle spent together. There's a ring, the only world Mina has known. With stick figures standing along the its edge. The tall one is you. Drink? Asks Lem, producing a worn-looking bottle of Girol from the under the bar, its contents glowing amber in the fluorescent light. Sure! Lem nods and glugs a few fingers into a couple of metal tumblers, and sits down with you at the bar. Cheers, he offers, and you cl clink the metal containers together. You know, we actually have something to celebrate this time around. Lem gives you a sideways look. I made the assembly team on the side reel. He grins broadly. Clearly, he has been desperate to tell you all cycle. Amazing! Lem holds out up his drink. Couldn't have done it without you keeping an eye on little Meanie back, back here. Lem shifts a little on his stool. He looks uncomfortable. How's our girl doing, sleeper? I haven't seen much of her these past cycles. Um, uh, um, so I mean, I'm, I'm, sh I'm sure she misses her father. Lem looks away. Yeah, he says to no one in particular. The silence stretches out as Lem takes a drink, his eyes fixed on the bedroom door. You okay? He nods. I can't take all the credit for Mina. She isn't actually mine. He gazes into the middle distance. I pulled her off of a refugee shuttle out by one of the of Ember's moons. The colony was failing or falling apart for decades after Solheim collapsed, surviving on next to nothing. Eventually, some of the residents tried to make for the eye on these decrepit old shuttles. He sloshes the drink around at his tumbler. They had no idea what they were doing. The one Mina was on decompressed halfway here. Everyone spaced. The only reason she made it was someone sealed her in a weapon locker. He was ice cold when I reached her. Purple lips. He shivers. Woo! Once I picked her up, I wouldn't let it go. The medics treated her with me still clinging to her. He takes a drink. Still not sure why. He reaches over and refills his cup. We weren't exactly anybody's heroes, you understand? We were private military, hired in by Conway to protect their claims in the col collapse. But once I got Mina, that was it. I quit. Got us dumped here. <clears throat> You saved her! I think it's pretty safe bet her family is toast. Probably on the uh, ship that, uh, you know, she was on. Rest in peace. I'm going to sound like an idiot now, but... He sighs. He saved me. That's the truth of it. He looks around the decaying unit, its stained plastic plating and flickering lights. Me? I brought her to this. She was tiny, too small to know what she lost. But I can't stop thinking about it. He rubs his eyes, dark with tiredness. What if our number doesn't come up in the draw, sleeper? What then? The side reel will sail off without a thought, leaving us here. What kind of life is that for her? Um, yeah, you got, yeah, I mean, you, you got, you got to hope for the best, right? Prepare for the worst, is how the saying goes. You'll make it! Sorry, I know you don't have it any better. He looks at his cup and pushes it away down the bar. This is a celebration, right? Both of us on the team now. Both of us in with a chance. Together! That's right. We hold on together. Imagine all three of us riding the side reel horizon out of here. To a new world. He looks into his glass for a moment. I think I drank this too fast. He laughs. <laughs> oh, not that kind of laugh. An evil laugh. <laughs> Lem stands and starts to clear the glasses into the auto wash. I need some sleep, friend. Me too! Wait, see you around. All right, then. He catches your shoulder as you turn to leave. Thank you, sleeper. I mean it. From both of us. He pats your shoulder and you slip out into the dark of the walkway, with thoughts of little Mina in your mind. Oh, That was adorable. Oh, <gasps> what we got? Good robot achievement unlocked. Helped a friend and had fun with Bun Bun. That's right, we had fun with Bun Bun. Probably tracking your vitals and realized I was going to kill myself. Yeah, they, they, they realized there was no point in the contract because I was too stupid to live. So they canceled it. That's exactly right. How did you know? I 
minus three cry? Oh, why would I pick the thing? Oh, we got new things. Ambor Tea House. Oh! Mean G Express. Noodle Factory and Delivery. Ooh, I get food. Oh, wait. Noodle Manufacturer. Min G has a kelp stack in the basement. And he makes noodles from the seaweed. He doesn't pay much, but he'll shift anyone... But he'll feed anyone who does a shift. <gasps> Delivering noodles to the nameless units of the low end takes guts and a certain fearlessness when it comes to asking for tips. <gasps> Express Delivery. Can I get a tip, please? Fuck you! Pow, 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 pow. What the hell is this for a tip? Pow! Is that, is that what they're worried about? I swear, I swear. One side here where Horizon is done, I probably can't get money from there anymore. I don't have a new crop. And then I guess I'm doing deliveries. What's this again? Hmm. You guys think I'm made of money? Minus plus. Your crew slowly filters out of the shipyard locker room. The bubbling chatter reducing with each group that leaves. There's excitement in the air. Evan Age just made an announcement. The assembly teams are done. That on the locker room bench, you can feel the side reel out there. It's hulking mass now intimately familiar to you. Over the past cycles, you have watched it grow, be assembled. You have walked through its veins and welded its bones. Now it is ready for the final stage. I will go to testing now, or it will go to testing now. Then enter a final process of sealing and resealing. Checking and rechecking before it is deemed suitable for its generational trip. But for now, your work is done. You can't help but feel proud. A cough interrupts your thoughts. It's Lem, changing out of his work gear. Mina, nowhere to be seen. He smiles. He'll be ready soon. I know. It's exciting, although if you think about it, we are all out of a job now. He quickly adds, not that I'm complaining. Lem comes to sit beside you on the bench. She's got to be in her best shape when she gets she carries you, Mina, and me out of here. Oh, confident? Lem smiles apologetically. Why not? I figure I'm due a lucky turn by now. He rubs his hands nervously. No use in wondering what if, until the draw, anyway. And then there's a few cycles. To, and there's a few cycles till then. Lem is right, but the odds seem unlikely anyway. How many are working in the shipyard? Hundreds. A thousand? You've certainly seen more faces than you can count pass through. And are the Sealess Foundation even going to keep their promise? Out here, on the eye, you get the sense that no one will hold them to it. Why else would they be building the side reel in a surrogate system? As you think Lem watches you with a worried look. Tell me about Celis. The Foundation? He thinks. I'm not sure I know much more than you. I hear they have a planet in mind for the side reel. Something temperate and habitable. I think they are run by some rich folk from the core. People interested in doing things different. Different how? Them looks into space. Well, I guess they don't like the way the core runs things. All these surrogate systems, like this one, feeding resources into their silos. 
It's a pyramid of sorts, and we are at the bottom layer. I guess Celis wants to change that. I'd rather keep my mind on the prize, so to speak. I don't much care what they are for or against, as long as they can help us get out of here. He sighs. You ever been in the thunderstorm, sleeper? A real big one? Yeah! Right, then you'll know, Lem smiles. The sound, the smell, the rain hammering down, the whole sky stretched out and bruised, roaring and huge. The place I was born, New Pembroke, a dry old rock in a Conway system, had two seasons. One of them was as dry as bone, dusty, ugly. The other was one long storm, a side effect of the terraforming efforts, they said. Rain used to rattle off the roofs like bullets. It washed the dust away, turned the streets to rivers. It'd sing us to sleep and wake us in the morning. We'd wait half a year just to see it again. The best day was the one where the first drops fell. He sniffs. Some days I wake up swearing I could hear it again. Whoa! I mean, I like thunderstorms, but I don't think I don't know about half a year of thunderstorms. And rain, wouldn't that flood everything? I was thinking, Mina has never seen a storm, never even felt rain. She's grown up here, the ring her only horizon, always in the dark. I want to change that for her. You will! We gotta be positive. We don't know if this game's a positive game yet or an everybody suffers game. We don't know yet. They're still, they're still keeping you guessing right now. I did fail that other one earlier with, like, the scrapyard guys. So, yeah. Of course. Almost there. Lem stands stretching. Let's get back to the little one anyway. With the shifts done, I reckon she'll be happy to have me home for a few cycles. He shoulders his gear. Do you and a few for the draw? I'll be there! Right on, he grins. Lem leaves, making you the last person in the cavernous locker room. As you sit, you think about rain, and the little hope creeps in. Is it possible? Could the side reel really take you to a planet? A place with weather? With skies? With life? I mean... I mean... Uh, press X to doubt. You get up quickly before you can think, too, think about it anymore. It's too soon to hope. Too dangerous. There's work to be done. Right. Elis are apparently going to start moving the side heat real horizon to the hub soon. Shipyard. Have an age said that it'll be a few cycles until the winners of the draw are announced. You'll have to come back then. No, I still don't have anything for that. This thing has always just been like this the whole time. Okay. Disabling my tracker ain't been going so well, has it? <laughs> it ain't been going so well. Alright, where's the uh, doctor guy? Do 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 Tambor tea house. Gotta get on the run tea house. So this is for the thing I found, isn't it? And in gum box. You feel stupid doing this, but the penguin says, take me to Tambor, and this is the only Tambor you can find. Hmm. Tabla room? The tabla room in the tambour houses some of the best players in the low end. This is serious, high stakes only play. Uh, yeah. Cracking Havenage? 
You've heard that the Adagon Enforcer based here has been paying low-end residents for information on Haven Age movements. Ooh! What have they to hear? I have quite a few of these, don't I? Exciting. I don't know how many of them I had, though. I might need them for something else. Not bops! Minus not bops! Oh my gosh, still minus not bopping? You still need more syringes? Come on now. Yes, oh man. Neutral outcome question marks? Waitress looks at you with suspicion as you hand over the box. Is this the right place? As you go to leave the Tambor Tea House, a hand falls on your shoulder. Oh, hey, this guy looks familiar. Leaper! Fang hisses from behind you. How did you find me? A penguin! Penguin? What are you? He thinks for a second. Oh, do you mean... He mimes throwing gum in his mouth. That, was meant for, that wasn't meant for you specifically, but... He cringes. Look, it doesn't matter. Come, let's sit. Fang guides you down a set of stairs to one of the tambor's lower levels. The tea house is stacked with curved mezzanines, all connected by a central atrium. The levels are filled with makeshift booths and bars, and conversation bounces busily off the metal walls. Fang sees you looking around. This place used to be a fuel tanker's main drum, hence the name. The tea house part is a bit of a misnomer, though. You can get anything the eye offers from this place, but real tea isn't exactly readily available. He picks a booth, itself fashioned from some old salvaged tanker container, lined with spongy insulation foam, and collapses into it. He looks around furtively. Don't suppose you've seen any Havenage types? They don't usually come out this far. Only you. Heh, <laughs> not anymore, I'm afraid. Suspended without appeal. Turns out Harding has someone's ear. Hmm. Yes, you do. I'm gonna get the pointy syringe. And watch out. Be like, point, point, pow, 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 pow. You, you better watch out. You better watch out. Oh, yeah, all of a sudden I'll be like, poof. Yeah, yeah, I better keep an eye out, man. It's dangerous. Bop, bop. Nah, I wouldn't do that. I don't like syringes. They're too pointy. How dare they? At least my, let you finish exploiting first. God damn it! God damn it! <clears throat> he grin. Wait, did I read this one? Oh, I didn't read that. He grins. Doesn't bother me, though. It shows we hit a nerve back there. He picks a scrappy hand-scrawled menu from the table and tosses it over. What are you drinking? Why are you so calm? You know any reason I shouldn't be? He leans in, suddenly concerned, but then waves the idea away. Hold that thought. Let's order first. Aang is right. The menu is ridiculous. There's at least ten different infusions, most of which you can't make out. But the paper is dominated by an extensive complement of ex esoteric al alcohols and cocktails. Black tea is listed, without a price, as a seasonal specialty. So you ran into Harding? Was he pissed? Fang doesn't wait for an answer. That snake is so self-righteous he might actually believe that Erlin would approve of his mer meritocratic bullshit. He taps on the table. If Haven Age was like it should be, like it was founded to be. They would have shouted him down at any council meeting he dared to mention true citizens. He sighs. But I guess his kind run the place now. 
The young woman with the vine tattoo snaking up her arm turns up at the booth, a slate in hand. Your order? You skim the menu, your eyes glazing over. Time to pick something. Kelp infusion. She nods and notes it. And you? She begins, looking to Fang, but when she sees him, she suddenly stops. What the? Fang shrinks a little. You are supposed to be working. This is your shift. He grins sheepishly. You work here? Fang wants you to be quiet. Look, Jenna, let's just say this is my break. My friend here has been through a lot. Jenna looks between the two of you. Nod. Nod, nod, nod. Fang also starts nodding. Two minutes, says Jenna. Oh, wait. Two minutes, says Jenna, pointing at Fang. And only because I don't want to get dragged into whatever this is. She gestures at the table and walks off. What? Fang stretches out on the booth. You know how it is. We all have to eat. Plus... He leans in. This is the best place around here to find a person you might be looking for. Who? Like who? 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 Remember that web of connections that Harding pinged the moment we confronted him? Those are his collaborators. Oh, no. And if we want to understand what a Solheim executive might be getting up to on the eye, those are the people we have to find. Thing is almost whispering now. There's a couple of them I suspect are in the low end. And, well, almost everyone in the low end comes through this place at one time or another. He brings a modified slate out onto the table. I've set up this... I've set this up so that when anyone with the network signature I'm looking for comes into close proximity, it'll mark them. Once they are marked, we can break through their access protocols and get at the good stuff inside. We just have to find them first. Hence me moonlighting as a waiter. Suddenly, a smile grows across his face. Wait, I have an idea. What? He's like, oh no, not an idea. Look, I can't cover enough of the low end on my own, and so far I've had no matches in this place. With two of us, we can cover more ground. What am I getting into? Well, Fang has a hang hangdog look. What the fuck does that mean? We need to get you out and about in the low end, in close proximity to as many people and residences as possible. And it turns my out my friend Mingji needs help with some deliveries. As in Mingji Express? So you already know him. Perfect. Fang places a tiny receiver on the table. This connects to my slate and runs the same marking protocol if you get near any of our targets. So all you have to do is take some delivery shifts for old Mingji and soon enough we'll have the place covered. Fang! Don't give me that. You think I like working here? And I thought we could use the tips. He grins. We are in this together, right? Um, yeah, all right, I guess. I'm just, I'm just along for this guy's crazy ride. What about my tracker? There's definitely no way to stop that bounty hunter guy from showing up. Because this quest line's going on way too long. Uh, my tracker's never fucking leaving, man. A bounty hunter has show is uh, unavoidable. I, I get the feeling this this is going on for far too long, man. I doubt you can do things like entire quest line before the bounty hunter guy shows up. I have my doubts. Uh, where was I? Here? Okay then, Fang sl Fang slips his slate back under as it closes. Just head up on to uh, head on up to Mean G Express. Take a delivery shift, and we'll see what shakes up. You manage to find anyone and extract any data, bring it right down here to me. They have to find me. They have me on double shifts, so I shouldn't be hard to find. Jenna walks past, carrying a tray of drinks, and sharply catches Fang's eye. I don't think she's bringing you your she's bringing your drink. He stands. I think it's time we called this meeting to a close. You grab the receiver from the table and slip it into a pocket. See you soon, sleeper. Stay safe. Fang adds before turning and walking off towards the bar, whistling as he does. Whoa. I'm never, I'm never, ever, ever getting that tracker out. I'm never getting that freaking tracker out. Not happening. Oh, 
Nothing to do but. <sighs> ah, what's up? Yeah, that tracker's staying in till I die, man. Uh oh. You miss me? You're looking a little uh, rough for this. So you look like you've been in some fights, man. You okay? You just get out of the hospital? What's going on? You miss me? Ethan smiles a ragged smile at you. No? You look at him. He's paler than usual. Hunched. He's sporting a black eye and more than a few cycles of beard growth. That's no way to greet an old friend. Friend? Well, he pauses. Colleague? He smiles weakly. This is big. Really big stuff. About you. He seems more jittery than usual. On edge. Damn, he's got like some withdrawal symptoms going or something. You remember how uh, now on how Essenorp cancelled the contract on you? The contract I was going to collect? I remember. Well, I'm guessing you were pretty happy about that shit. Overjoyed. Me? I lost everything. Let's not worry about that. Really? You were so close to broke that losing one contract bankrupted you, bro? Like, what are you doing, man? What are you doing with your life is losing one contract is the end of the world. He smiles sarcastically. And so what did you think? That was it? I was just glad to be done with you. Oh, the feeling was mutual. Except, Ethan leaves a dramatic pause. What if old Essenarp gave the bounty to someone else? Someone who is even more of a shithead than yours truly. He smiles darkly. What a disaster that would be. You're bluffing! Sure, sure, you could think that. But then you'll wake up, or not, with a bullet in your head one of these cycles. And if you could think, which you wouldn't be able to because of the bullet, you'd be thinking, Oh, I wish I'd listened to Ethan. He grins. Uh, no, I wouldn't. Ethan fit fishes around in his pocket for a slip of paper. I've been speaking to some friends, you see. Some colleagues. About what went down. And it turns out, SNRP cancelled all their bounty contracts. The whole lot. It seems they brought someone in-house. Some guy who did so well on their last contract that they got offered a job. He leans in. Ugh. Apparently, he made a hit on his, this ship called the Winter Wonderland or something. Uh-oh, uh, that's the one we uh, disassembled. It was smuggling sleepers out from under SNARP's big corporate nose. He killed the crew and blew the ship. Ethan whistles. <whistles> they called him. Hemwick or Maywick or something. He gives up looking for the paper. I forget. You mean Winter Light? That's it. He looks at you hard. So you do, do know all about the, or about all this. He pats you on the shoulder. Then you'll be very happy to hear what I'm about to offer you. Ethan runs his hands through his greasy hair. Given this new information I've brought to light, it seems like you are in need of protection. Wait for the pitch! I, meanwhile, am in need of assistance in kind. It turns out I upset some people at the compressor the last time we were there. The owners. And they say they'll space me unless I work off the debt. Wait, debt? What fucking debt? I was paying your fucking tab! Why would you have debt? Seems that they... Seems they are that kind of businessmen. He grimaces. I would pay them, but... He shrugs and turns his jacket pockets inside out in a mime of poverty. Oh, you poor thing. I feel so bad for... No, I don't. He looks pitiful, even more so for his clownish acting. Then work it off, you bum! Get a job like the rest of us! You should be glad. The anger rising in him now. That I came here and told you this. You think anyone is, out lo is looking out for you? You are a contract. A name on a list. He kicks the wall. Uh oh. Ethan rubs his temples. I'm sorry, he hisses. I'm sorry for being a shit and trying to kill you and whacking that thick skull of yours. He sighs. Holy shit! He, what? He apologized? What? What? This guy's capable of apologizing? I'm not sure if he actually means it or not, though. I think he actually means it. I don't believe it. Hey, Dash Grande. What's up? What's happening? How's it going? 
people can run good and it's too good in this one. Oh, is that so? Is that so? I just started this game today. This is my first playthrough. I don't know what's going on yet. I don't know why I'm talking like this either. I just felt like it. You think I want to go up against this guy? But us? He jabs a finger between the two of you. We don't have a choice. You keep me from getting killed and I'll do the same for you. We can help each other. A straight 50-50 deal. He looks at you. I'm not asking for a favor. Uh, I mean, I mean I'll probably have to do it for an achievement anyway, but fine, I guess. Ethan smiles. He looks like shit warmed up. <laughs> Just, he pauses. Just think about Maywick. Think about that cold-eyed SNARP shit on his way here from the core systems. He smiles. That should give you the motivation you need. Ethan swaggers off down the corridor, throwing his jacket over his shoulder. And wait to be working with you, he shouts. I, I think I could wait to work with you. Wait, where else can I do? What else can I go? Can I get a Yapagon thing? A three will work. And we can get the doctor guy, right? The last update is there's multiple endings, but what I last completed the game was uh, cook at another episode. There's a few episodes. There's some DLCs. I saw like up toward the top of the map. There's some DLCs available. But I'm not gonna do them for a while. It's, it says in like the warning, like you should, it's for late game, so. I'll leave that stuff for a later. Later! Ugh. As you turn away from the terminal, the final cache of Yadagon data uploaded. The air crackles with white noise. Sleeper? Sabine's voice, weaker than before, comes through the haze. Sabine? Or Sabine? I don't know how to fuck pronounce his name. A sigh of relief comes through the layers of noise. The call must be coming in from somewhere on the station. This has to be short. I don't know if Yadagon are monitoring me. Their voice is hushed, distant. You try to focus on it. The data you've been bringing in from Yadagon agents. There's something in it I don't understand. A shrill howl rattles through the signal. This data is all gleaned from their implants. Records of integration with their nervous systems. Performance analysis, error rates, usage data. I installed many of these implants and I didn't enable any of this functionality. Their voice dips under the level of the noise, like a swimmer slipping beneath the water. You listen to the waves for a few seconds before Sabine re-emerges. Has to be somehow baked into their wetware's interface. And that's not all. The systems compiling this data are connected to some kind of transmission protocol. It's being broadcast. Stay silent. Every Yadagun enforcer is equipped with black market implants, retinal enhancements, adrenaline boosters, pain suppressors. These implants are gathering data on themselves, on the enforcer's bodies, on their performance. But I can promise you these foot, foot soldiers have no idea what is going on. The background tone switches, dropping to a grainy rumble. If they knew, I don't imagine they wouldn't be happy with the situation. Yadagon could have a mutiny on their hands. You lean toward the terminal, straining to listen to Sabine's faint voice. I need a few cycles to pull this all together, but this might be the information I need to pressure Yannick into releasing my debt. Yannick? He's one of the heads of Yadagon. They pause. It is better you don't know him. Keep it that way. Suddenly a banging echoes through the call. Sabine's voice is suddenly whispered, panicked. I have to go. Come back in four cycles. Then the sharp crack of a disconnect and silence fills the apartment. You step back from the terminal. What does Yadagon have to gain from monitoring its own members? You try to recall what you know about the gang, but you have little to go on. You think of Toshiro, Sabine's my minder. Sabine, Sabine, I can't I just change it to the pronunciation whenever I feel like it, apparently. His mirror teardrop implants set below, below hard eyes. What data could they be gathering? And more importantly, where are they sending it? Good, point. Good question. You reflexively rub your forehead, trying to think. Can you really trust Sabine? How did they come to be Yadagun's doctor in the first place? You think of their kindness, their care. 
but also that glazed look of recognition that they gave you when they first met you. That look stays in your mind as you slip back out of the apartment, glancing around as you close it up and drift into the corridors of the station, unable to shake the unpleasant sensation of being observed. Uh-oh. Go back in four cycles. Oh, no. Oh, no. There are two places above the guild on TA. What? Those slackers. Those peasants. Wait. Is this supposed to look like that direction? I guess. I'm starving. I was supposed to do some deliveries, weren't I? Nom, 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 nom. More like 30. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess we need to buy that new synthesizer stabilizer. I'm not going to uh, put it in yet, though. Once I'm in declining, I only get two porta. Uh oh, there's a new new clock. No. Are you the only one who pays me any money now? The deb. Not as much either. long I have to prepare for Maywick and need to leave the station get protection or disable your tracker before they arrive oh fuck <laughs> yeah I'm doomed 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 no way to have upgrades You didn't know get double data rewards? Ooh, that sounds pretty useful. Wait, why is that? Don't I have an upgrade point? Oh, this one takes two. Ooh. Time for them to find out they didn't make it. The crowds have already gathered by the time you get to the shipyard, and you recognize faces among them, people you have worked alongside on the side reel. The intervening cycles have turned their excitement to anxiety, and few of them smile at you. Instead, the nervous energy of the crowd fills the space, creating a feedback loop of growing tension. You pick out Lem and Mina and work your way over to them, pushing through the crowd. He silently raises his eyebrows at you, his anxiety obvious, but Mina flashes you a huge smile, unaware of the tension. Robot! She shouts. 
reaching out to you. Hi, Mina! He waves frantically, grinning. Fight the turnout, huh? Lim glances around, pulling Mina close. I don't think patience is one of this crowd's strengths. The sound of an argument towards the back catches your and Lem's attention. He's putting it lightly. This place seems set to explode. This isn't good. Lem doesn't dare answer, but the look in his eyes suggests he agrees. I would say if you're getting into arguments, you're automatically disqualified from the lottery, man. Poor guys. Uh, wait. This is Aster Anghart of the Sealess Foundation. The announcement echoes from the speakers at the shipyard entrance, and shouts of QUIET rapidly follow. I'm sorry I can't be there to meet you all, and thank you, on behalf of Sendre Silas, for the work you have done on the side real horizon. Most of the crowd strains to see Aster's face, but the small display shows only a ghostly white figure, smudged and unclear. Sendre wanted me to pass on her personal thanks for your commitment to and belief in the Silas Foundation's mission. We chose the eye for this project because we knew that we would find like-minded individuals here, especially among the ranks of the Venerable Haven Age Association. Unlike most of the Corps, we neither believe er Erlin's eye to be a threat or a rogue state, but instead an embryo for the formation of a new, decentralized social structure, one where each citizen might be the master of their own destiny. A ripple of impatience runs through the crowd. They didn't come here for a sermon. Yeah, like, fucking tell me if I made it or not, you little bitch. That's what they want to say, do I? You are all pioneers, just like those core citizens who the side real horizon will carry. In cryosleep, to the planet that will become the Foundation's first frontier world, Celus One. Okay, if you're in cryosleep, maybe it's not so bad. If you're awake the whole time, that's like 20 years plus of your life that you get old and shit. Like, if you're in cryosleep, maybe it's okay, I don't know. They had that technology. I don't know if I'd want to sleep for 20 years, man. Or longer. Because you don't know what world you're waking up to, right? I don't know. But I bet they'll have really cool video games, right? Yeah! Anyway, tell us if we made it or that we didn't make it. Wait, 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 wait. It's for us. It's Planet Cup's first frontier world. Sealess 1. That's a very original fucking name, by the way. At the mention of the Destination World, excited conversations break out among the workers. There, our citizens will be able to create their own, innovative, bottom-up economic order, aligned with the principles set down by Sendre Silas herself. Freedom, resilience, and self-sustenance. This is all thanks to your tireless efforts in the Haven Age Yards. Like, it's gonna be any different. Come on now, man. As a reward for those efforts, you may know that we are offering a select group the opportunity to join the caretakers of this vision, the staff of the Side Real Horizon who will maintain the vessel th during its multi-decade transit through interstellar space. Em turns to you, his eyes bright. This is it! This is it! Ah! Wait, if they maintain it, that means those guys aren't in cryosleep. So he wouldn't be in cryosleep. That would suck. This draw has been performed at random by the central AIs of the Foundation, and is final and binding. Please note, only licensed contractors of the Foundation are eligible for this draw. I know you have all been eagerly awaiting this day, and without further delay, I will now read the sealess identification numbers of those chosen for this great honor. A murmur runs through the crowd. Sealess identification numbers? Licensed contractors? You have never even heard the term mentioned. Is this something you were supposed to be assigned? You glance at Lem, but his eyes are fixed forward, wide and shimmering. All around you, people are speaking in hushed tones, like a rising wave. Aster starts reading out sequences of numbers and letters, and panic begins to set in. No one seems to know what is happening. Somewhere near the front of the crowd, someone shouts in celebration, and everyone pushes forward. Wait, wait, Lem? You turn to see Lem still staring forward. Mina is scared now as the shouts start. Daddy? Uh-oh. Someone throws something at the entrance and it rattles against the shipyard doors. You see, for the first time, Haven Age security stood on either side, scared, arguing between themselves. You feel the anger rising in the crowd. Uh-oh. Whoa! Uh -oh. Whoa! Uh -oh. Who were these ID numbers? Oh, they had extra stipulations that they didn't tell anybody. 
Lem, let's go. He's not gonna go, though. He doesn't move. I'm just... They might call out names. I can't. Mina tugs at his dog tags. It's not happening. Lem blinks rapidly and then turns to you. He opens and closes his mouth and looks down at Mina. He sees the fear in her eyes and understands. It's time to go. You lead Lem and Mina out, shoving people aside. As you do, you hear the sound of scuffles emerging at the front of the crowd, of metal canisters bouncing off the shipyard walls. You keep your head down and walk away. The sound of Astro reading off the ciphers echoing above the chaos like some strange mantra. When you turn to Lem, there are tears tracks running down his cheeks, and Mina is sniffling into his jacket. You feel the sadness rising in you, too. They screwed you. Screwed all of you. You were never even on the list. The feeling is as unpleasant as it is familiar. No way! Who could have predicted this? You stare ahead into the tunnel as the sig security sirens sound out. A signal for the coming violence. What a shocker. I failed! God damn it. Like, like you could do anything except fail. Like, come on now. I can do anything for Felis are apparently going to start moving the side rail horizon to the hub soon. Wow! How long will it last before somebody blows it up? You're all done with that now? Woo! Uh, the red circle now. Lem's out. There's a note on the door of the unit. Sleeper, gone to work. Lem. Oh, the! Not Bob. A uh, not Bob. Waiting for Simi to be ready makes you anxious. If Yadigan finds out what they are up to. Oh, that's you mean dead, though. That's not your problem. To work on Ethan's debt, huh? Wait, work the back? Wash up, stock check, cleaning, prep work, back work at the compressors, all bad smells, flickering lights, and hard scrubbing. Why can't Ethan just do this shit? Why is he such a lazy piece of shit? Work off your own debt. Is he basically uh, stringing me along, making me work off his debt for him? Piece of shit! Fuck you! Meow. Work the front. Working the door, taking delivery, staffing the bar. Front work at the compressor is a cocktail of shouted orders, alcohol, and violence. Whoa. I believe they make me do this shit. It's all dangerous, so it doesn't really matter what I pick. Doesn't really matter what I pick, it's both danger! It's just endure versus engage. Oh wait, one of those can get me something, right? It's based on your upgrade thing. Just to gain energy after any engage action. Do, 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 do. Endure. Endure is just that. Endure doesn't seem to do do anything over here. Oh, there the That's just gambling, man. I got an energy! I take. Ow! How dare they do this? Bible thump. Like a piece of shit. How dare you. Stop 
stealing my energy, you piece of shit. You fucking... Go. Aren't I... Don't I have a chance to gain energy? Fuck you! Wow! So we're good now, right? They're never gonna release my debt, the shits. Ethan kicks out a locker and the sound rattles loudly around the room. Ethan paces around the small room, swearing to himself. You watch him from the locker room bench. Calm down, they'll do it. Or why not? Why not? Why not? He spits on the floor, an old habit. They like having a sniveling little having sniveling little shits like us to work their club. Saves on the overheads and they get to boss us around. He kicks the locker again and swears. What did they say? Some shit about getting back to me. I swear to god, those are the most straight edged gangsters I've ever seen. He laughs at his own joke. Ha ha funny. I can't do it. I can't spend another shift stopping spacers bringing nail guns into the club or pouring endless shots of gee roll for ignorant having age work crews. Oh, so he is working too? He's not he's not just having me do all the work. Okay. He looks at the locker again, threatening it with a final kick. I mean it. I'm going to go up there and shoot every single one of those shits. He makes a finger gun. Hold on! Don't get all excited. I haven't got my gun, remember? He stops pacing. But, you know, sleeper, that's not a bad idea you have there. I didn't have an idea! He ignores you. I don't mean shooting up the place. I mean getting the gun. He sits beside you on the bench. Think about it. What am I supposed to do when Maywick gets here? Shout him down? I need that gun if you want me to keep up my end of the deal. It's simple. An explosive personality for a distraction at the front. He places a hand on his own chest. A sneaky sleeper to go in the back. He pats your chest. What about the debt? We've done our time, and the wounds, they've faded. If they don't notice us take the gun, they'll never know it's gone. Plus, he stands up. After my distraction, they'll be happy to see the back of me. Or they'll want you dead even more. Either works. At least I'd never have to see the inside of this shithole again. He gives the locker one last kick. For good luck. Let me know, know when you want to do this. Then we both move as one, and meet up in the bright market after. But don't take too long, or I really will shoot this place up. He grins. You know I'll do it. Uh, uh, um, where the lockup is, and Ethan's gun has been there since the bartender took it. Time to take it back. Um, I can't say I know about that. Don't say I know anything about that. Negative outcome plus one energy. Hi, streamer. Hello, viewer. No, ma. The doctor thing's wrong. Ready. Hi. Hi. Wait, I mean, bye. Just looked at the clock. Uh. Bye. Bye. Whoa. Not bops. Minus not bops. Fine, fine, fine. Wait, how, how do you save the game? Is it just auto save? Last auto save, 39 seconds. I guess it just saves. Oh! There's like text and stuff. Ow! You can't go? Why not? You haven't seen anything interesting yet? Poof! Very interesting right there, right?
I mean, hoof. Wow. Whoa. Wee. Wow. Jim, 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 jim. A sleepy time. A sleepy time. You know what time it is. It. A sleepy time. We've been playing this for almost six hours. It is almost 2 a.m. and it's time to go to sleep. Sleep. All right, calm down. Oh, okay. That was another hip hopping and bopping popping stream. Wasn't that exciting? Wasn't that amazing? Wasn't that cool? Wasn't that cool? Uh, button. Very interesting game. I didn't know this game was going to be so text heavy. <gasps> I didn't know anything about this game. Very interesting game. Oh, well, we're going to come back next week. And um, uh, we're going to totally not fail any more of these drive things. Yes, we are. See that one right there? We're gonna fail that one a bit. Yeah, we're gonna it's gonna be fine. Ah. I'm since last auto save. Oh my gosh. Wow. Woo! Well, next exciting. Woo! Go too crazy with that. Just be calm and slow. What do you think I am? An old lady? I wouldn't go like this super slow. Slow. I am some old lady. Get out of here. Get out of here. I mean, go to sleep. That's, that's, that's enough video games for today. That's enough video games for today. In quiet. That's literally a Mission Impossible right there. Impossible. I cannot be quiet. Except when I'm sleeping, I guess. I guess I'm pretty quiet then. No, yeah, no, sleep. Be quiet, right? <laughs> I'm shaking the throat about it. We do shaking the Can't believe this. Want some notes there? Okay, okay, okay. Well, you all take care of yourselves. You have a good rest of your day, night, whatever it is. Thanks for hanging out, Dolby and Cock. And Deus and the um, uh, Iver, uh, Pyro, uh, uh, everybody else who stopped by at night, I can't remember. Lots of lurkers. Everybody! Take care of yourselves. Head pa, head pa, head pa, woo, head pa. It's a very interesting game. Let's see if I can manage to almost starve and die and stuff again next time. Whew. Thanks for pro streaming. Oh, they're welcome! Too loud, can't hear menu music. There you go. Whoosh! <laughs> I'll have a good night, Dolby. Go watch the, like, the VOD for the menu music. Like, like, the starting soon screen. There you go, there you go. Otherwise, oh, but too bad, so sad. Go to YouTube. You're wrecked! In the stride! Hey, anyway, uh, I'll be back, uh, tomorrow for more hardcore and armor core verdict day. Probably die. <gasps> I'll be doomed. Doomed! Doomed! But, you know, that's tomorrow. Ah, uh, that's no problem. 